Hello, chat. <laughs> Good evening. So, but you might have heard about a little bit of a nonsense going on in the tabletop community. If you don't, I'll get you caught up to speed. Don't worry. You don't need to roll dice or be a nerd to know about this one. But I got something special for you because it turns out the tabletop community has its own lol cows. Did you know that, guys? They got their own lol cows, right? So today we're going to go in on one of them. And to be frank, I think this guy is the kind of guy who would get an internet beef, right? And um, here's the thing, right? There's a lot of debates that are had about this, right? But it uh, it's almost kind of funny because, because you know, we covered Shadowversity for two streams, a total consecutive eight hours, right? Um, and and it's funny because these guys are a lot of like, right? It's always like these fat white guys with like a goatee, um, and they just have the worst takes on earth, right? Now, I, I don't want to be like the political Andy streamer, right? That's not what I'm I'm here to do, right? A lot of these things that are the opinions of these people are are things that are so like obviously inappropriate that it would take like an idiot to be like, oh yeah, wow. You know, stuff like stuff like making rape jokes. Um, or, or like, uh, well, not even like rape jokes. Cause I, I could see that working, but it's like, uh, raping children jokes, stuff like that. Right. Or, um, just being like blatantly racist. And there's a couple of other guys like this in a community, um, that'll be covered another day. Uh, there's a guy who's like a commissar something in the community. Um, there is like a woke hammer guy. Uh, who's like super annoying that I'm blocked by already. Um, but but on the right side, right wing side of things is is those guys like the commissar guy that I can't remember the name of. We'll probably figure it out as we go through this. And Arch Warhammer, who we'll get into, right? So so let me let me get into some of the background on this. And Mod Greg in the chat can uh, feel free to chime in. Um, let me also just say, right, I could see a bunch of uh, Chud Hammer Andes in my comments being like, oh, this guy is such a fucking tourist. This guy is such a fucking tourist, right? One, one. I'm a forever DM, first of all. Um, I have ran a, I think it's about 60 hours long Warhammer uh, campaign for Wrath and Glory over the last six months. Uh, my main army is orcs. I have about 3,000 points in orcs. Uh, about maybe 1,000 points of those are painted. Um, my second biggest army is probably about 2,000 points worth of Death Guard. Uh, most of those aren't painted. Those were a, a cheap purchase I got from a friend. Um, and then I have about 500 points of Space Wolves because... We all got to have some space marines. Unfortunately, I pick space wolves. Uh, if I could go back and do it over again, I find the dark angels much more appealing. I think they're way more interesting. Um, I also love the night lords. I would love to pick up the kill team of night lords. Um, so, yeah, I did try out sisters of battle to paint those. I didn't like how small they were. Um, so it was hard for me to paint them. Uh, but I love a good orc. <laughs> Trans um, Fats celebrates nine months fats. of membership in playing some RE4 remake right now. Nano best mod. <laughs> Nani best mod. Yeah, Nano, Nano is uh, the alternate reality version of Nani, right? So, so I am, I am an orc player. Crazy, the guy who wants to fuck a goblin is an orc player. Who would have thought it? Um, yeah, even aside from that, I just checked. Since I've been running with the crew that I'm running with, I've done about 500 hours of DMing as well. So I probably have the most experience in that. I have played a bit. Oh, I also have about 500 points of Votan. Stupid purchase. Stupid purchase. That was the only time I've ever bought something like day one. Um, but yeah. Um, so with that said, let's talk about what happened recently, right? Um let me go find a tweet about it unless somebody can quickly uh 
get me something for this. Yeah, the sisters are a nightmare to paint, which is why I don't paint. I would put professional DM on my resume. I've thought about doing professional DMing for like work. Um, but yeah, I kind of go back and forth on it. Um, okay, so just so you guys know, the Custodes Index uh, Codex was updated recently, and I will read out that piece from the codex that was updated what a codex is if you're not a 40k person is basically the rule set for an army it contains a lot of very specific things that you need to know if you main an army and stuff like that uh these days you can find most of the information online but one of the things you get with that is the nice r and a lot of lore tidbits right so the custodies finally got their 10th edition codex and with that they got something that i'll read Custodian Calidus Taravalia Kesh stood upon a bridge of a Cobra-class destroyer named Vigilant Flame. The warship belonged to the mighty battle fleet Solar. She lingered in the shadows. She lingered in the shadows at the back of the bridge, positioned at a spot where she could observe the actions of every crew member, be they administration pits at the armament shrines or, in the case of Shipmaster Lethwick, stood a ramrod straight before his command throne. So what you're hearing there is about a custodian on a ship. So the custodians are about 10,000 strong in number, which is actually a very small number for an army in 40K because we're dealing in numbers of millions to billions. Um, the custodies are basically... The way Greg explained it in the Little Guys server is the way I'll explain it to you now. They're kind of like mini primarchs and primarchs are basically um think of the emperor the guy who wrote, rules over the 40k universe um as uh god and jesus and think of the primarchs as his apostles right so if you're from a western society hopefully that resonates with you enough these are powerful important people right so if you're under that level of primarch you're pretty fucking powerful right one custodies can take down hundreds of thousands of orcs, can take down hundreds of thousands of other people. They're incredibly powerful soldiers. Um, the creation of a custodies is kind of a mystery, and generally speaking, you can't make more of them. So the 10,000 custodies that exist are the 10,000 custodies that will always exist, and every death for a custodies is a huge, huge deal because they cannot be remade. So because it's a mystery and because it's nothing saying you can't basically who's to say they can't be women right because nothing ever said you couldn't now space marines which are the poster boys of 40k these big blue guys in armor if you're unfamiliar with the setting right those guys were specifically denoted as being male in creation because of some genetic yada, yada, yada. It was basically a bunch of science techno babble saying all space marines are men. But custodians and space marines are two different things. And I understand the comparisons of two guys in power armor, but the custodians are different. So, as Greg said, handcrafted personal guardians of the emperor. Basically, these are guardians of God for all intents and purposes, right? Now, there was nothing ever denoting that there couldn't be female custodies. There wasn't. Um, this was actually mentioned by Aaron Dembski Bowden about five years ago. Um, Aaron Dembski Bowden is a writer for Games Workshop. He is an author, right? So I will pull that up now. Shout out to Greg for doing this and pulling it out. So let me grab that now. Here we go. Right. But there was nothing saying you couldn't do it. So that's why they went. And now they've done it. Um, there's a bit of uh, meta reasons going on, by the way. Um, so part of the reason that there was no female space Marines is that in the 80s, um, they didn't really test well. So those miniatures were quietly phased out. 
And as the lore and world of 40K developed, that's why all the Space Marines ended up men on the tabletop. Because, well, one did better monetarily. That's really it. Um, basically, a lot of the lore decisions are decided by what needs to happen on the tabletop. A miniature line comes out and all the sculpts are shaped the same way. It's an all-male line. We can't say that this females because all these models look like men. That's really it. Oh, Oz Media. Custodians don't use Gene Seed based on a Primark, so I'm curious as if they do reveal some of the creation processes. I don't think they will any more so than what we got in the Codex. You know? I really, I really don't think we will. All right, but Aaron Dembski Bowden is a writer who's done tons of books in the setting. All right? And he said this five years ago. Right. What I was saying was at the time of working on the lore, there was no reason there couldn't be male or female. As far as things stand, there's still no lower reason they can't be. But there is a non lore reason, which was the previous intellectual property overlord saying, quote, there are no female custodian models. They're all male. So don't write any female ones. Basically, they don't want to accidentally, you know, put the cart before the horse and say there's female custodians and then not have any female custodians for the tabletop, right? Uh, there was also a studio mandate a couple of years ago after that saying don't do female custodians. Again, it seemed to tie in with the release of an all-male mini line. Two very rare moments of direction from on high. I don't want to argue about what may or may not or, or what that may or may not mean, since although I'm ambivalent to the notion of female space marines, really, they'd make such little difference at the end result. I couldn't care less what gender they start out as. Several creators actively thought female custodians would have been cool, and there was no lore against it. Hell, we were in a position to make lore for it. But long story short, no. The answer seems to be there aren't any, though the reasons aren't in-universe yet, right? Uh, my only complaint is that it makes the Sisters of Battle and Sisters of Silence look like a joke. Both factions are really cool. I don't want them to lose their spotlight. I don't I don't think they're going to lose their spotlight, right? Here's the thing. Every time this conversation comes up, the, this this kind of thing is is the argument that's brought up, right? And, and I'm not poo-pooing on you, but you're the first one who said it. I knew somebody was going to say it tonight, right? So Sisters of Silence have always kind of been like the second fiddle sidekicks to the custodians. They were always going to be in that position. I don't think that position was going to change. I also don't think they're particularly popular. Um, Sisters of Battle, on the other hand, are pretty popular. Uh, in lore, they're pretty interesting, right? I don't think the Sisters of Battle have ever looked like a joke or have ever looked ridiculous or have ever been bad. I think their models are beautiful and really complicated and hard for a lot of beginner painters, which definitely makes them a bit more of an issue for some people. But... That isn't something that I think is going to happen, right? I don't think because a female custodian exists that there's going to be no room for Sisters of Battle to have a spotlight, right? I I, I think that's a bit goofy. Um, and with the amount of Black Library books we get a year, I think that's going to be fairly impossible. Uh, part of the problem is, is that most of the Black Library is situated around Space Marines. So as a result of that, all of the books aren't going to cover the characters that we're interested in, right? But, and if you're unfamiliar with this, I'll show this on screen right now, so that way I can get you caught up to speed and I don't get everybody lost in a bunch of jargon. The Black Library is basically where the, uh, is, is the publishing house for the books in the 40K setting, right? Um, as time has gone on, they've started to add more characters of different, you know, various different things, right? So, all right. So, it, it, I don't know why this website looks so bad, <laughs> by the way. Right. So, a lot of these books are going to be based around, oh, guess what? <laughs> Space Marines. This is, let's see. Oh, that's a Lamenter's short story. So, a lot of these are short stories on here, not books. Uh, but this is published newest to oldest. This is a lot of successor chapters, right, of Space Marines. Uh, that's very obviously like an orc book. That's a book on a Primark right there, right? 
uh looks like it i can't see it's like super small are we talking about janitors or something <laughs> uh but they 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 have added um new characters of female persuasion but the problem is is that a lot of it is in the basis of certain factions right i think the inquisitors probably get the most and best female characters if we're talking about anything um I just worry that, uh, fair point, I just worry that they'll lose what little screen time they had. The Sisters of Battle are my favorite. Uh, the Marines just take up too much room. That's that's basically the the thing that everybody will agree. Yeah, everybody will agree that everybody thinks the Marines take up too much space. The Marines do take up too much space. But, you know, ult- the, the meta reason why that happens is, is because ultimately, Ultramarines are the most popular... They're what's going to bring in the most money. It's why we always get a bunch of stuff on fucking Space Marines. And I'm totally fine with that in some regards. I like reading about Inquisitors. I think the Warhammer Crime series is really interesting. The Warhammer Horror series is really interesting. Um, So if you haven't checked those out, those are nice non-Space Marine books, right? What's your fave book? The one I always recommend to people who haven't read about it, it actually might be in the just starting section of this website and i will pull it up now right so if you're like just getting into 40k uh dan abnett's the founding right it's a gaunt's ghost book that's a really good one right uh xenos which is the first book in the eisenhorn trilogy is really good you also got a bunch of amazing characters in there that end up getting their own stories, right? There's so much in here that you could learn to love, right? Eisenhorn has an amazing retinue and characters, right? Even as a Marines player, I think they take up too much space, especially the Ultramarines, 100%. 100%. I think everybody can agree with that. I don't think that's a very outrageous thing to say, right? Um, But yeah, people, people are like, oh, why is this getting you know like the female custodian argument being countered with i don't want the already existing female factions to be shafted i everybody's getting getting shafted <laughs> i do want to read the kane series i really recommend the kane series if you feel the eyes and horn series is getting way too like serious and grim dark i like caiaphas kane is just a very lighthearted character um, so if you're looking for like a little bit of easier reading, I think the Kane novels are a great ra- way to break it up. Um, anyway, all this to say, and and to, I just want them to put Carcharodon's books on Audible. <laughs> okay, keep dreaming. <laughs> I like the Carcharodons too. I don't think it's, that's going to happen either. Uh, those kind of chapters never get any love, but that's just, you know, Ultramarine Andes, right? Um, anyway, point of the matter is I, I'm not a tourist and like the immediate, uh, discrediting thing that happens is, Hey, you don't know the lore. Like I do, you're not, you don't care about the setting like I do. So people don't want to address my points because they'll say, well, he's a tourist. He doesn't care. Well, I I do. I'm very passionate about this setting. I'm reading the Horus Heresy. It's 60 books long. Uh, the only good Xenos book we ever got was Infinite and Divine, unless that changed recently. As far as I know, no. And it is the only good one, and it's very good. But it's a shame that that's the only one. The audiobook for that, by the way, phenomenal. Um, I highly recommend the audiobook for that. Um, and he's not technically an alien, but uh, Belisarius Calls, the great work, I think is pretty good as well. Um But, yeah, with that said, that is our discussion tonight. Our discussion is about this female custodian being introduced in a single paragraph in a rules book change. Now, there's a bunch of other reasons why people are are mad about this codex. Um, This, this, like, uh, codex for the custodies, I heard... Uh, nerf them quite a bit. So on the tabletop, meta wise, uh, they got a huge nerf. People don't like that as well, right? So there's that. I get that. 
that's a reasonable thing to complain about, especially when they're an elite army and you only field a few units and the units are expensive. It feels like they're trying to, you know, make you buy more miniatures and it's frustrating. Um, I, as somebody who has... I have way too many miniatures in storage right now, so I can tell you that, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's basically what's happened. Um, and there's been discourse since that happened, right? Now, discourse means that everybody's yelling at each other. Everybody's very mad. Now, I, for one, as an individual of culture, am quite honestly happy that uh <laughs> this this major lore revelation of i honestly don't think it's that big of a lore revelation honestly uh about the custodies having women um i don't think it's that big of a lore revelation personally um but it's really funny that they did it with the custodies first then something that was considered an all-male faction because if you don't know there's a meme in the community about the custodies being all homoerotic uh, gay men who like to fuck each other and oil each other up with their glistening muscles. That's the joke about the custodies, that they all like to be gay and oiled up, right? Like the gachi moochi type stuff. So, you know, I mean, I for one love a nice oiled up muscly woman. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so another thing is that the official Warhammer Twitter account made a statement about it. So in, so people have decided that the best way, okay, like if you're going to do female space Marines, right? Hypothetically, I'm not making a position on this, um, I'm not I'm not making a position on this, but if you're going to make a say that, oh, there were female space Marines this whole time. You would just say there were female space Marines this whole time. Right, because why would you retcon the setting to be like, oh, actually, right, you'd just be like, they were always there. We just never covered them. Right, because the setting is humongous. It's very vast. So it would make sense to just say that. Which is probably the best way to handle it than to make some like gigantic world shattering change, right? So the official Warhammer Twitter account said, uh, so this uh, egg account was like, why'd you make female custodies? Since the first 10,000 were created, there have always been female custodians. In my opinion, that's probably the best way to handle it is that that was just always the case, right? And Nobody noticed or mentioned it or felt like mentioning it. And we've just always covered male custodians up until that point. Um, I think that's perfectly reasonable rather than doing something crazy and like making it a character that stands out. Right. So the character should blend in. She shouldn't. As a female custodian, if you want to do that, if you want to do women characters, they should occupy the spaces the same. They shouldn't be put on a pedestal. That's inappropriate. That's not fair to anybody um so this is just could even just say belisarius called did it yeah oh my god so we're we just gonna ignore the sisters of battle and sisters of so i'm not gonna constantly keep repeating my same fucking point tonight it, this one thing this is the you know what this is you know what this is guys this is the stupid fucking like twitter post where it was about the waffles and the pancakes like that's a whole different fucking sentence <laughs> Right? That's that, that's that's what this is. This is like no bitch, that's a whole new sentence. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> right? Literally this. Twitter, the only place where articulated sentences still get misrepresented. I could say I like pancakes. Somebody will say, You hate waffles? No bitch, that's a whole new sentence. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I'm I'm not well I just got here, damn. <laughs> So, 
See the the can we get Misters of Battle now? See, that's the exact thing, right? So every every time this debate comes up in the community, they're like, Well, why don't we just get brothers of silence? Why don't we get Misters of Battle? Like, motherfucker, that's a whole different thing. You're saying a whole different thing. <laughs> like Right? Like I things can mean two things, right? The problem Ultimately, at the end of the day, the issue is is that Space Marines get way too much coverage. It's not surprising that they do. That's really it. <laughs> the only base argument is that women are icky, and that's why femboy-only Adeptus Sororitas Sisters of Battle is needed. <laughs> Listen, anybody who comes in the rest of the night, who, who makes a Sisters of Battle and Sisters of Silence argument... I'm sorry. I'm going to rip you a new asshole. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> because because it's like the most it's it's I'm, it's a smooth brain argument. It's a smooth brain argument. It just is. It really is. <laughs> and the reason that argument exists is because guys who are bad at this debate immediately go to that in their video, right? And and with that said, in the grim darkness of the far-flung future, the only whataboutisms and whataboutisms never change. I feel like I just had a stroke reading that, Greg. <laughs> right? So so this is this is like um <laughs> brothers of peace the evil twins of the sisters of battle this is this is frustrating right because the argument gets really annoying and the argument gets really annoying because of the female space marines debate and there's a lot of annoying people who give annoying opinions about it i'm not here to really tell you how to feel or how to engage with your hobby right what i'm saying is is that the guy we're going to be looking at tonight is unequivocally the most annoying shit in this hobby. I say that without any hesitation whatsoever. I am I am on the side I am on the winning side. Why? Because me and Major Kill share the same opinion. Right? So I'm going to open it up now and we're all going to take a gander. Have any of the main lore channels spoken out about the change yet? Like West, Major Kill, or has it only been Arch? Um, so Arch spoke about it. Uh, Chapter Master Valric spoke about it, and he was cool with it. Uh, he's the guy who really likes the Iron Fist. Uh, with the Yellow Space Marines. I forget their fucking name right now. Um, he made a video, right? And he basically was cool with it and then his comment section turned into like an absolute fucking nightmare disaster right mercury celebrates three months of membership i love it when diesel streams when i'm at work thank you i try to stream when you're <laughs> Oh, Imperial Fist? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I don't like the Imperial Fist. I think they're boring. <laughs> Sorry, Imperial Fist guys. Okay, so we're going to start with a little lore dump from an old Major Kill video. Okay? So, we'll start with that, and then we'll we'll get into the nitty-gritty of it, because it gets a little goofy bananas. Come on! Yes! Fuck yes! 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 So it, it, it's pretty clear Major Kill does not like Arch, and I think with good reason, by the way, as as he explains it. Uh, but uh, if you don't know who Major Kill is, he's uh, unlike many in the 40k community, in good shape. <laughs> Get this fucking shit off me! Uh, there, there Did we go. I, fuckheads. <laughs> 
as is traditional on this channel, whenever we overtake another lore YouTuber, we give them a little shout out. A little spotlight before we completely forget that they exist. Oh, Commissar Gamzo was the other one. Uh, he's for another stream though, I think. Spiky Bits as well. Guys, I've been following tabletop drama. I've just been choosing not to cover it, but I decided with Shadowversity, now it's time to start looking at these niche communities and making fun of these fucking guys, okay? Yes. What can I say? I like to look out for the little guy. Out of everyone we've left in our dust, Arch is by far the spiciest due to his incredible ability to divide the community. Needless to say, he's one controversial man, but is he actually this demonic alt-right neo-Nazi that Sig Marxism make him out to be, or is he just a bit of an edgy dude who likes to push people's buttons and make offensive jokes? That's what we're going to get to the bottom of today. By the end of this video, you will know for sure what's up, and if you're a bit out of the loop about Arch, then you will also know why a lot of people are cross at him. Just quickly though, remember ages ago when I said I was working on this like hectic intro animation as a part- Okay, okay, Major Q, get to the fucking point, all right, Dios. And criticism he receives is valid or not. If you are a huge Arch fan and you know you've already slapped that dislike button, I would encourage you to watch the video through, as towards the end of this video, I'll be sharing a bit of information that no one else really seems to be aware of that might really illuminate the extent of the entire debacle. Wait a minute, Major Kill, you've said naughty offensive things in the past, isn't it? That, that's true, that's true. So Major Kill's a pretty offensive guy, he'll make pretty fucking offensive jokes, um, but it's very clear that it doesn't come from a place of uh, malice, right? I think I think you can tell a lot when somebody's like delivery and attitude like he's clearly just like the offensive Australian and he's playing that up as a character rather than somebody who's like a racist. <laughs> a bit hypocritical for you to call out Arch? Not at all. I have a deep appreciation and understanding for edgy humor. I don't flinch when someone says a naughty word or have a knee-jerk reaction and just assume there's some kind of grand Listen, listen, I almost said the F slur on stream. I can't you know, I can't <laughs> Dragon of the KKK wannabe. As such, I reckon I'm actually the best person to analyze and explain Arch, as I know the difference between poorly delivered offensive humor and just straight up racism. Also, this isn't a call out video. Well, at least it, it is. Yes. It is a call out video. It is, this is a call out video, Major Kill. Okay, it would not end up on my stream otherwise. I might get too excited as we go along. Let's get into it. First things first, who is Arch? Arch is a Norwegian man who started covering the lore of Warhammer Fantasy over six years ago. He was among the first YouTubers to begin covering Warhammer lore on YouTube. Like he started even earlier than One Mind Syndicate, and maybe even earlier than Luton. Although it's hard to tell with All Luton, right, he has so much what's old the FPS. 411? Ah, uh, Axis. Just you wait. Hey, uh, Axis, by the way, I'm also going to uh, thankfully be using some lore that Medicare dropped on stream to talk about a side character who shows up in this <laughs> content that I can't be stuffed scrolling to try and find his first ever Warhammer lore video. Regardless, Arch was first to market for Warhammer Fantasy and as such enjoyed extremely rapid growth and a ton of views despite being a very new channel and the overall quality of the content being a bit meh. After a little while, he also started doing 40k lore and found a ton of success there as well. Needless to say, he was a happy little camper and he owned a huge market share of the YouTube Warhammer lore content creation community. For lack of a better term, the big man was peaking. Now when you are top dog, it's easy to let things get to your head. Hence Arch, in his infinite wisdom, started inserting questionable politics as well as edgy comments into his videos. Yeah, also yeah, so um, I, I went looking for a lot of these old videos from Arch and if they are somewhere on the internet, I would love to know where they are. Arch had a bunch of weird political takes that he would wrap into his 40k content. And he started getting rid of those videos. Um, so I had went looking for those and I wasn't able to find them before this stream. So either they're there or they're gone, but a bunch of this drama isn't covered anywhere else. So we kind of had to piece it together from what we have. But if Arch isn't going to stand behind his terrible takes, then like, what's the fucking point, right? begun antagonizing GW and CA in an attempt to drum up drama which would in turn bring him attention and more views and shit, leading to this infamous moment. Um, I'll see you next week, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to go over this drama in detail with what I have, uh, but basically Arch had made a bunch of very, like, he, he got into an angsty debate with a community um, over at Total War, right? And what happened was, is he really didn't like Creative Assembly. Creative Assembly makes a Total War games. They make Total War Warhammer Fantasy. Um, they do the historical Total War games. And basically, the thing, the debate was about, um, 
like hot women in the character portraits. And so it had basically culminated with Arch making a bunch of offensive opinions about Creative Assembly, saying they're doing the go woke, go broke thing because Total War had been declining in quality. Now, Total War had been declining in quality, irrespective of the hot women. Great tits in Total War Rome 2 was not going to fix that Total War Rome 2 was buggy and a mess and bad at launch. Great boobs on a Drukari mommy were not going to fix the fact that I had to pay $5 for blood DLC in Total War Warhammer. Okay? A bunch of those things happened regardless of the uh, breastedness of things, right? But that was the basis of where that hate between Creative Assembly and Arch started, right? Now... Uh, there was a bunch of Reddit back and forth from what I'm able to tell. But again, I'm piecing this together after like five seconds and a bunch of my memory, right? And uh, Arch Warhammer is a dickhead. Goodbye. See, that was it. That was all he said. Arch Warhammer is a dickhead. For context, that's an old community manager for CA on his last ever live stream. He did this because Arch made a video having a go at CA's community manager Grace because she was pretty disgusted by the whole big titty waifu mod situation. So Wheels was- Yeah, so, so yeah, he, he's explaining it now. There was a big tittied mod and it basically, you know, one of the creative assembly people got angry about it. Um, it's a mod you probably really don't get the chance to dictate what the community makes, right? And he managed Grace because she was pretty disgusted by the whole big titty waifu mod She, like, Gr Grace, the community manager, is allowed to be disgusted by the big titty mods. Uh, but what she can't do is tell people not to make the big titty mods, right? You can have opinion about it, but it's a mod. You're probably not going to be able to stop them unless you start issuing out legal threats. Situation. So Wheels was basically telling Arch to get fucked because Arch took a shot at a work colleague and likely friend of his. I think that's pretty fair, to be honest. Great. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair as well. Uh, but that community manager was leaving right after that live stream, right, from the, his position. Um, and so Arch basically, the way Arch phrases it and, like, frames himself in this afterwards is that he's a victim, right, of Creative Assembly uh, discrediting him and making him look bad, right? That's the way he frames it. I don't really think it is. You know, once you got skin in the game, you got skin in the game. You're fair target. Arch, you're fair target, right? Your hairline is cringe, you look fucking gross and fat and like you look like you smell, okay? Like, I don't know what to tell you. This was super upset about the waifu thing, but I don't want to spend 10 minutes analyzing who was right or wrong, so I'll just leave a link to a post that deep dives into it if you want to know more. But at the end of the day, Wheels was backing up his mate, which is the right thing to do in most situations. Soon after this, GW officially blacklisted Arch Warhammer, informing all companies using a Warhammer license that they could not interact or work with Arch. They then took it a step further and they issued Arch with a copyright strike for using the word Warhammer in his name. I, I, mm, 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 they definitely could have sent him a, 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 you know, they could have said something to him. They could have messaged him and be like, listen, you need to take the Warhammer part out of your name, right? Listen, nude mods are cringe and you can argue, uh, ar argue requires takedowns, but these types of mods are just whatever. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, um, I play Skyrim with big titty mods on occasion. You know, sometimes I play Skyrim one-handed, okay? Sometimes you want that. No, 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 no. We're looking at Major Kill for the lore. Lunar Phoenix, thank you for not uh, feeling too offended when I roasted you. <laughs> Hence why he's now just called Arch. My opinions on that are a bit mixed. On one hand, yeah, sure, if you blacklist someone, you probably don't want them using your brand in their name. But a straight-up copyright strike is a bit harsh. As we know... Yeah, I, I don't think blacklisting him is wrong. It's their choice to do that. And as you see some of his other takes, you'll understand why he was blacklisted, right? This isn't just based on his creative assembly drama. It's a totality of different decisions he made. YouTube is a bit spineless and will always side with big companies over creators when it comes to copyright. So this was definitely a bit of copyright abuse on GW's part. I've heard that it may have just been one dude from GW going rogue and doing it, but I can't find solid evidence to confirm or deny that. So yeah, I'm just not gonna confirm or deny that. While Arch did get a lot of attention from all this, he also turned a lot of the community against him as more and more of his content was put under scrutiny. All so, so a bunch of Arch's content started getting uh, tagged 
right? And people were kind of like breaking down his opinions and thoughts and stuff like that. And he found solace and camaraderie in. <laughs> okay, guys. So this was like three, four years ago, if I'm thinking about it. Um, this is three, four years ago from the time of this video, right? And this was published in 2021. What happened three or four years ago from the time of this video? Right, right? Gamergate. <laughs> it, it's funny. I was looking for a superhero themed TTRPG to play with my players. And it was two years ago and there was a Gamergate debate in it. And I'm like, holy shit, it's been a decade, guys. It's not 9 11. Move on. <laughs> So Arch Warhammer found camaraderie in people like Bearing, the quartering, and in particular, and in particular, Sargon of Akkad. Yeah. And so there is an interview between Sargon and Arch because they became like mutuals, right? <laughs> now Here's the thing. If you don't know who Sargon of Akkad is, let me give you a small TLDR. Uh, so first of all, Sargon recently became a flat earther. I saw on Twitter. That was a <laughs> that was a moment. Um, Sargon ran. Sargon ran for UKIP Parliament, right under the UKIP license, and Sargon became political. Like, he became political poison, right? If you were in UKIP, Sargon was too offensive for you, okay? That's how bad he was. Sargon was too offensive for UKIP, right? And you might be wondering, what? <laughs> Does this Shadowversity like Sargon? Yes. It's all connected. <sighs> Where's Diesel? I can't see him. Hal. Uh, that's a funny joke. Fuck you. Yeah, Sargon basically killed the party. Um, Sargon of Akkad. Right? So, Sargon went... Oh, God. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. UKIP, the party that many credit with delivering the Brexit referendum. But what happens when Nigel Farage, one of the most charismatic political leaders in recent times, leaves to start a new movement no, based on the same idea? Didn't go away. I asked you earlier uh, on today about your decision to defend your candidate and his suggestion that he wouldn't even Jesus. rape oh. Labour MP <laughs> Jess Phillips. So I would like to ask Carl Benjamin why you think it is acceptable to say on Twitter that you wouldn't even rape a female Labour MP. Oh. Because I don't think women are any different to men in the way that we should treat them. <laughs> Unlike. <laughs> so, so his joke about not wanting to rape a labor mp of parliament turned him into such political poison it killed ukip there is a picture of sargon sitting by himself at a ukip meet right nobody in the party wanted to come because it was career suicide to sit next to carl benjamin the establishment, unlike our judges, who literally say, if you were a man, I would have sent you to jail. I think we should treat women the same as men. And that means if a woman is being a giant and laughing at male suicide, I'm going to be a giant back to her. Any questions? So it's acceptable. Yes. It is acceptable to, to go about raping a woman. 100% deal with it. There's no... <laughs> right? So, on the internet, when you make, when you do debate bro stuff... You can do stuff like that. You can say, deal with it, right? You can suit do that. Didn't he also say about him being white, uh, being a white N-word while running? Oh, Sargon also said he was part black, by the way. Sargon kept saying he was black. Actually, let me just find a Medicare part. I feel like an asshole just playing that. But really, there's nothing better than that
Let's see. Oh, wait. Is this a... This might be one of the funny clips. Yeah, that was when Count Dankula was going into politics. I think he, Sargon was his running mate. Now, perhaps, perhaps Sargon. What the fuck is this? This is not the original stream. Why am I looking at this? Some guy made like a, a animation about it. Uh, Medicare Sargon. It's like the Applebee's stream or something. I'm trying to remember it. Oh, here we go. I opened the first men's warehouse 10 years ago. I thought. Takes what? place at an Applebee's. There's our waiter trying to bring us a nice soy latte. What, what, Look why, at him. Why, why is this thing animated? I don't remember seeing this animated. <laughs> yeah, this is the animated one. He looks so proud of his outfit, doesn't he? Isn't he handsome? What a handsome boy he is. Well, our our big boy, our big Applebee's waiter boy, uh, he's very proud of, uh, of uh, I don't know, something like this. I am a division manager. That is very important. What the fuck? I don't remember this being animated at all. This is insane. <laughs> Why is this animated? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so basically, Sargon killed Ukip, right? And he he wouldn't retract on the rape joke, okay? Because normal people don't want to go vote for a guy who's like, rape jokes are based, rape is funny. I have a black grandpa. Right? Which, by the way, which, by the way, Sargon also said he had, like, a gr black grandpa. Uh, Sargon of Akkad, who's white as hell. Okay? So, that's the kind of person that Arch Warhammer was siding with, right? This isn't a Sargon video or stream. But it would be really funny if it was. Um, I couldn't do it justice anyway. But, yeah, so that's the kind of people Arch was siding with. Because those are the only people who would accept him. Because because it was the woke big game industry that was uh, attacking Arch Warhammer. Okay? That's what happened. Right? That's how they view it. Videos of his, which contain some spicy takes, were dug up. Oh, yeah, that's right. He also said, Ar Arch also said, like, and were this, and were this. More and more of his content was put under scrutiny. Old videos of his, which contain some spicy takes, were dug up. Arch, his content, and even his mention was banned from the 40k lore subreddit. He was no longer the lore master for the casual Warhammer fan. He became a bit tainted, like he went from easily clearing hundreds of thousands of views on any Warhammer topic, as well as doing a collab with fucking Markiplier, to now struggling to get even a quarter of those views on lore videos, despite there being an overall larger Warhammer audience on YouTube. To make matters even worse for old mate Arch, some screenshots of his less proud moments from his Discord were published online, and they went pretty viral. I'll go pull those up right now, right? So we'll go read some of those post from him let's see boom all right <clears throat> hold on we're gonna have to zoom in a lot wait the black people can't even find black history month then why do we use a month for it not sure dang no cotton emote black history in three easy steps one Get captured by black people. Two, get sold by black people. Three, get liberated by white people. Any questions? Arch Warhammer, by the way, not American. No, no, no. The N-word is not a smart creature prone to violence. Oh, oh, okay. The N-word... Is not a smart creature prone to violence. Prone to violent outbursts. The black man is just fine. In the immortal words of Chris Rock, there are black people and there are N-words. N-words have to go. <laughs> uh, 
there are white people, then there are socialists. No, 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 no. There are people, and then there are socialists. <laughs> oh, and they were also kind of blackies to think, pa to think paint rendered them invulnerable to bullets, plus barbed wire, by the way. Pretty sure it had a ching chong off. <laughs> Sammy equals gypsy, but worse. Oh, Jesus. At least gypsies only steal things. <laughs> it used to be legal to shoot them. Gypsies, he means. Time for a, quote, field exercise with live ammo. Yeah, but those pesky human rights. <laughs> In the 20s and 40s, we were so close as following the problem. Guys, if you don't know, the Romani people during the 1940s were rounded up and uh, genocided much like the Jews were in the Holocaust. Uh, the difference is that while the Nazi record keeping was phenomenal for how many Jews they killed, the Nazis didn't even uh, record keep for the uh, gypsies they killed. So tons of Romani people were ostracized and killed and not recorded but that's this what guy runs to. a podcast like shay diversity and all he does is have a little cut out of his head where he talks about everything being woke much cast oh axis i know we're gonna have a good time <laughs> hmm maybe god does hate yellow people unpopular opinion but i think the chinese deserved it i mean the locusts do seem to be setting a pattern bright side of life at least now i know why the black chick in jedi was so ungodly ugly lol lamau damn la arch if it were an anonymous mistake they wouldn't double down on it she was trans ahem <clears throat> this is the best one real fascism leads to a utopian state where every member is both spiritually and physically fulfilled while leaving as much luxury as the state can possibly afford. Uh-oh, the guy saying that the gypsies being killed was based also thinks fascism's cool. Uh-oh, I think he just might be a neo-Nazi, but who am I? Uh-oh. <laughs> Romani people still go through insane amounts of persecution. Um, but uh, my audience is American. They don't even know what a gypsy is. <laughs> At least as viral as Warhammer related content can go. This was the nail and archer's coffin for a lot of people. It went from this dude that they heard had the occasional hot take but made good law videos to a confirmed racist. This also sparked a big debate. Was this archer's actual opinions or was it just a bunch of edgy jokes taken out of context? To get that answer, let's use a case study about myself. It might shock you, but I wasn't always this hyper attractive, big dick, big brain chad who could successfully navigate the line between edgy and funny humor. But I too have incriminating screenshots from my Discord where I say some pretty uncool stuff. Can't drink while at work, so glad I have to listen to another goofy thing while sober. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> stuff, like objectively, can be considered worse than Archer screenshots. I don't exactly remember what it said because it's been like nearly five years, but yeah, was not good. Those screenshots of mine were sent to various YouTubers, uploaded to the Sigmarxism subreddit, and even featured by Arch himself on stream. Yet I was never cancelled. There was no big uproar, and I honestly think I'm the only person in the world that actually vaguely remembers it. Why is that? It's because my screenshots read like an edgy teenager trying to look cool and funny, because that's exactly what it was. I think I was 18 or some shit. Your first reaction to mine wouldn't have been, oh my god, it's Hitler reborn. You would just kind of cringe. Archer's screenshots, on the other hand, actually read like a racist. Obviously, some of them were just satire, <laughs> like the f. M. Prague Diesel. Okay. <laughs> 
fascism utopia one, but none of the others are remotely funny. This is compounded by the fact that these screenshots are all really recent, only a year ago. So there is no, oh no, he's just young and immature excuse. Like the dude is easily in his 30s. You know, I would remember thinking the neo-Nazi accusations were silly back during my Ed Lord's phase, but I'll be real, even that me would agree with the accusations. <laughs> I used to be super fucking edgy. I used to be super fucking edgy. I've talked about it on stream. I saw Bilo Yiannopoulos speak in person, guys. Okay? That was wild, by the way. Or maybe the wrong side of 20, it's hard to tell. At that age, you would assume he would understand how to deliver edgy humor without looking like a white supremacist. I'm not outright declaring that these weren't all just Archer's attempted humor, but it leaves you with one or two options. Option one, Arch- I don't, I don't think, I don't think this was a joke, Major Kill, and we'll see why soon enough. Is racist. Uh. Or option two, Arch has a very unfunny and mean-spirited sense of humor. I mean, there's only so much, it's just a joke bro, relax, can do to protect your reputation. However, I'm not going to crucify Arch just yet. After all, everyone has said or messaged stuff that they probably don't want the general populace to know about, joking or not. Arch and 18. You are aware of these all? <laughs> Milo was a fed, so you're all good. <laughs> year old major kill were just dumb enough to post it on public discords. The racial controversies weren't Archer's only issue in 2020, something that I found pretty cringy were his thumbnails for his Jedi Fallen Order playthrough. I personally subscribe to the notion that any topic can be funny, however, edgy well, Look at that description, balls, 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 <laughs> balls. Topics require more wit to get a good punchline out of. Arch commissioning an artist to draw a picture of him sexually assaulting a woman isn't that funny. It's very odd and kind of gross. Oh my god, Major Kill, you're bodying him. You're killing him right now. Stop it, he's already dead. Another issue we had outside of the whole Nazi thing though was his Discord moderators. Those pesky moderators said some interesting things. I can't see, I can't see. Fuck Arabs, to be honest. I'm fine with Jews genociding Palestinians and getting all the territory for themselves. The N-word is not a slur. It's purely a descriptive term for people with high melanin content. If someone chooses to feel offended because of that, then that's their own problem. <laughs> hmm. Islam itself is the main problem. Most Muslims being barbarians just make it worse. There can be no peace with Islam. It goes against the fundamentalist. The only way to achieve peace is the total extermination of Islam or the total submission of Islam by everyone else. <laughs> can you speak on the amiibo brothel you're running? I mean, they're just kind of sitting there, you know. <laughs> the thing with CP kill him kill this guy chat nuclear bomb shoot him I can't say that in Minecraft in Minecraft of course <laughs> the problem the thing is that with CP for the most part no one gets harmed I want you dead clean shot in Minecraft it's lolly or involves CGI or professionals Paid and consenting parents, too. Child actors. The thing you get shown in all media with family or gangs torturing and raping children is a rare exception. Kill this guy, wood chipper, in Minecraft. <laughs> the two most common approaches of professionals in the industry. This guy should be killed in Minecraft. <laughs> this is one of Arch's mods, guys. Arch Warhammer, no. I'm not reading the rest of that one. My grandfather was quoted as saying, there's a difference between a black man and an N-word. <laughs> he turned down a cheaper, more finished house uh, uh, in turn for a piece of shit they live in now because the neighbors were black. One day, driving my grandfather around, he asked me 
Would you be driving down that road there? I want to show you where the N-word hill is. I think I think we've made our point. Changing from some hot takes about Muslims and black people, all the way to some very uh, unique perceptions about child pornography. Once again, this could just be their attempt at being funny instead of just shit people. This is not an attempt at being funny. This, this is like, you know, like, you have like a collection of beliefs, right? Like, I'm not surprised the guy who runs is, is maybe a neo-Nazi has moderators that think CP is like cool and fine. But I personally draw the line well before joking about children getting raped. It is important to note that just because Archer's moderators said these things doesn't mean Arch necessarily endorses them. You collect, you collect alike people. I'm not surprised all my mods are like degenerate people. <laughs> A few of my moderators turned out to be neo-Nazis and they were promptly banned, I might add, but it doesn't reflect too good on Arch at all. There were also people complaining that Arch had podcasts with controversial characters such as Sargon and the Golden One, declaring him guilty by association. Uh-oh, Arch Warhammer and the Golden One, the future of Sweden, genetics and politics. Uh-oh. 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 Genetics? Sweden? Politics? Uh, it sounds like a. I, I don't want to be that guy who dog whistles, but. I don't know. But I think that's pretty silly. Having conversations with people of opposing political views and values is very healthy, and the world would be a better place if more people did that. It 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 is, and I agree with Major Kill on that point, right? But. I don't think that that was a debate. Just my opinion. I'm not saying that Arch necessarily had opposing opinions to them, but it's ridiculous to get mad at someone for chatting to controversial figures. After all the chaos and cancellation of 2020, in 2021, Arch finally fell out of the spotlight. You know, other than getting his channel hacked and deleted for a bit. All the controversies had more or less killed his channel's growth, as new fans of the setting are constantly warned to stay away from him. Large parts of his audience that used to tolerate the occasional political commentary because they really enjoyed his content finally switched off. His channel hasn't died though, it's just taken a hit and is no way near what it used to be, but he still maintains a loyal fan base that provide him with enough views and subscription pledges to maintain YouTube as his full-time job. His content these days mostly involves around lore videos, random niche video games, and a lot of bitching about GW. Like, a lot. For a time, it actually looked as if me and Arch finally agreed about GW for once. Their new copyright infringement policies and the way they implemented them remain to this day a huge... Tusky celebrates six months of membership. My birthday is tomorrow. Buy mana potion coffee. Thank you, Tusky. Happy birthday. That's very based. Also, yes, buy mana potion coffee. He can head to the link above and go and get it. And also, make sure to tell Tusky happy birthday huge fuck up by Games Workshop, and I did a few videos on the topic as well. The difference though, is that Arch sees a headline or post, and bang, video. He doesn't fact check himself, wait for the situation to unfold a bit more, or get in contact with the affected parties. He just makes clickbaity content about it, and has been wrong multiple times. I was very conservative about my videos criticizing GW. I talked to numerous people to make sure I wasn't just spitting out sensationalist bullshit. Don't get me wrong, GW deserved to cop shit, but misinformation is never a good thing, even if it does fit your preferred narrative. I do want to really quickly mm, talk about crazy, one more crazy. Mm. Before we get into the uh, the spice of the video, I want to talk about his recent extreme hate boner for GW's leaked NDA. I had a look at it. I sent it to a lawyer mate of mine, and I read through various forum discussions. And the general consensus is that it's actually a very stock standard NDA. Arch probably just hasn't seen one in so long because no one wants to work with him, so he's forgotten what they're supposed to look like. And guess what? If you don't like a company's NDA, don't fucking sign it. Not hard. Somewhat recently, something mind opening happened. Something that really clears up this entire situation and actually condemns Arch pretty badly. This is the thing I mentioned in the intro. Around the end of April, Arch deleted nearly 50 yep. million- yeah. I am not surprised Arch did that. Part of it, I think, was because he was moving his political content to a separate channel, which we're going to look at, chat. But I also think he didn't want to get A-logged. I think that was part of it. Views worth of videos. But I will say, not Nani's chomping at the bit, Arch. Okay. Nani's activated. You don't want to activate Nani. <laughs> I'm not sure how many videos that was exactly, but it's well into the hundreds. Before you said that this was probably due to the hacking situation, that occurred in January. This mass video deletion was April, May. Why would Arch delete like a third of his videos? Well, let's look at the videos he deleted. Diversity in 40k. Just know. 
diversity in 40k. Interesting title there, mate. Deleted. Another video he deleted was the one where he complained about a black ultramarine on the cover of a Warhammer novel. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't quite quote him from that video. Is the funny in the rubber room with us? Uh, <laughs> uh, guys, I can't believe it. They added a black guy into my sci-fi setting. Crazy. Because, you know, he fucking deleted it. But the idea that in the 500 worlds of Ultramar, there isn't any black people is fucking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> so black people on ultramar okay it's really goofy to say that there's no such thing as a black space marine that's outrageous all right and no the salamanders aren't the only black chapter they did not segregate all the marines into one black person chapter which major kill space marines take upon the appearance of their primarch shut the fuck up timmy you rat you fucking rat only a handful of space marine legions undergo this mutation and only one the salamanders will actually change skin color yeah Law they, there we go there we go there's the answer fucking ass his video about the christchurch shooter oh what a surprise he <laughs> i need to find that christchurch shooter video oh my god i need to find that hold on If somebody finds that for me, I am going to be so happy. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You know he had nothing but horrible, horrible takes in that video. Deleted it. Can't imagine why. It's pretty easy to see a pattern here, guys. I mean, I've deleted one video before, like four years ago, and I felt like it wasn't a good representation as me as a creator. But I can't imagine deleting a third of my videos. Did he delete them because he's a changed man and regrets them? Unlikely. Did he delete them due to some external pressure or cancellation? I don't think so. I don't recall I a so. single post about Arch since he got hacked. Only Arch truly knows why he deleted them, but it's not hard to make an educated guess. In all honesty, I went into this video thinking Arch was just an unfunny, try-hard edgelord shit-stirrer who some people just labeled as a Nazi because that's an easy thing to do to people you don't agree with these days. But after deep diving into what he has done, it's clear that in the sacred words of Wheels, Arch Warhammer is indeed a dickhead. It's not necessarily for his political opinions though. It's because directing thousands of people against an already upset community manager is a piece of shit thing to do. It's because being yep. a constant whiny uninformed bitch is a shit thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So, so Arch Warhammer is like a mix of Shadowversity and the quartering combined into one annoying nerd with bad facial hair. Okay? So that that's what we've really got here. And to add insult to injury, all right? Don't worry, I will cover the other other Andes who <laughs> took a gander. Um, but there's just so much that it's hard to so, yeah, yeah, this is about his lore with CA, right? Official CA statement, Arch Warhammer is a dickhead. Maybe we'll take a gander at that. Starship For someone troopers, who by explains 40k lore, he sure keeps getting mad about shit perfectly viable on the 40k lore. Uh, I have like an eight hours worth of stream on Shadowversity. <laughs> uh all right, let's take a look at this before we get into the politics channel. He doesn't like me for reason. We're live. I've been Wills for the last time. Uh, this has been my dad, Tom. Yeah. And um, I'll see you next week. Yeah. And. Uh... Oh no. Okay. So, thank you, Liv. Unfortunately, we have another crossover. <laughs> it looks like Vosh covered. Um, Vosh covered the Christchurch video he did. So we have to react to Vosh reacting to it. You're all right. We're gonna do. We're doing a viewer request 
on this one, okay? We're doing a fucking viewer request. I got this shit thrown in on my, um... Greetings and... Does this have no video? Oh, is this just audio? Oh, this guy's lazy, just like me. Oh, no. We'll see if we can do this. Listen, this was suggested to me on my subreddit. Oh, Nani Censorship as well. Is not the answer thank question. you, thank you, it's guys. The problem. Let's find out. Let's find out. And if this ends up being boring, I'm just going to skip through it, ramble incoherently, and then we'll go to the fucking John Doyle video that we all... That we're all... That we're all begging for. Salutations, friends. We are unfortunately going to have to talk a little bit about the Christchurch terror attack. Why does every fuck? <laughs> There is no godforsaken reason why a 40k lore channel needs to cover. <laughs> did you did you all take the Azathan insult and brand it? Good shit. <laughs> My everybody's a little guy, okay? Everybody's a little guy now. That guy that guy that was a good guy was great for my brand. <laughs> Fucking Warhammer person I see on YouTube talk like this. I'm a fan of an edgy, grimdark tabletop game. Oh, shut the fuck up, Vosh. You like horse cock porn, you fucking horse cock booner. Listen to my opinions. He's making fun of Luton there, by the way. That is definitely who he's making fun of. I'm going to constantly keep bitching and pausing. In Warhammer 40k, I would, of course, be an inquisitor, or perhaps a commissar. I have the natural charisma necessary to lead my... I'm being very I'm being very fucking uncharitable right now. Yes, Let's you go. are, Vosh. Yes, you are Let's being uncharitable, but fuck you. <laughs> Somehow you went from a guy who defends CP to someone who looks at CP. What an Ouroboros we live in. <laughs> Hi, Jazz. Welcome, welcome. Because I feel that the industry's response to it and come- I can't do it! Did he just roll his R when he said response? Resp- I'm gonna fuck- I can't do it. I can't do it. I oh, wish shit. I could get this without his stupid fucking Vosh moments, dude. This is gonna suck. Shit. Fuck! We need a cringe emote. We need to improve on haha. -ha. We need to get me going like- I don't even know how to do the cringe face. Like yeah, Archer's doing a fake accent that whole time, as people have mentioned. We need to get that, and I, like, Photoshop it to, like, blow it up a little bit or something. Um, to make sure that he's no misunderstanding. Warhammer on his lore stuff, but his politics are pretty yikesy. I don't doubt it. A lot of Warhammer fans are fucking trash heaps. Let's give this a shot. Companies you, you are literally, like, the pot calling the kettle black. I'm sorry. Like, fuck you. <laughs> this is the soy Ouroboros. Fonts in particular deserve mentioning and discussion. Now I'm going to do this in the old style because I'm going to have to choose my words somewhat carefully here to make sure that he's no misunderstanding. Because this is a <laughs> you very- give me 30 minutes and a link. I can get you a cut down copy. I mean, if you want. Uh, sure. Sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just shot him a DM uh, and I was like, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Um, And then afterwards, Oz, I'll make sure that gets on Internet Archive. So there's a copy of this video online. Um, Anyway. As as we're here, <laughs> as we're here, you might be looking at this channel and going, "This is like Shadowversity's political channel." Except, except, it's actually Arch Warhammer's channel. That's right. That's right. He runs one of these channels too. He runs one too. Just like that. Sisters of Battle all drink mana pot with D10. That's right. How do you think the Sisters of Battle get so oiled up and beautiful? They they drink mana potion coffee. Nuking Japan was a war crime. It was also an absolute moral good. Uh oh. I don't know why, but I kind of feel like you're unqualified for the war crimes discussion. 
All right. Anyway, obviously, you can see that this is an AI video or an AI thumbnail that Arch did about Adeptus Custodes. We'll take a gander. And then the inevitable happened. Thank you, Games Workshop, for finally providing me with the last piece of ammunition and proof that I required. See, for so long, I've been told that, oh, Games Workshop isn't that bad, they're not that far gone, female space marines will never happen, they'll never become that ideal. <laughs> uh, quartering Shadowversity, Arch Warhammer, the world's worst blunt rotation. <laughs> Uh, so is he putting on a fake accent right now I, it kind of feels like he's forcing it you know what i mean i know of course he looks like that of course he looks like that you're never gonna see a guy who's like a seven out of ten or higher make videos like this okay dudes who get uh pussy or bussy or plowed or pegged or whatever the fuck they don't do this <laughs> logically captured well we now have female custodies and if the custodies can be women then i damn well I guarantee you that female space marines are simply just a question of time although i will admit that this was certainly a far more did i say it cowardly is he okay seriously is he role-playing as like a british air aristocrat with that voice because it is really corny all right. Are we in the history buff to Nazi pipeline? Found about his way than I'd expected. I figured GW. What do you mean? What is cowardly about it? We get tons of new lore and codices all the time, you fucking cornball. He was so thoroughly poisoned by now, they'd go straight for the Femme Marines. Instead, they try to kind of go around the sub. Why do you? Why do you talk like that? What? 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 Is, what is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Are you? Are you dis disabled? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Object mattered a little bit by releasing it first for something that is less popular. Something that isn't the poster boy. Listen guys, I know I'm autistic as like the guy who likes to jerk off the goblins, but like this guy's at another level. Like we're 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 like that like what is his fucking voice? I can't fucking pay attention. <laughs> Even GW will, of course, understand that to fully submit to this is like a voice that I hate. This this is like a voice that I would do if I'm like doing a DD &D aristocrat, right? Oh, I bet you're wondering why I brought you here. Well, it's simple, really. I've brought you here to goon, my dear sir. I've brought you here to goon, and I, yes, of course, am, am the gooner of the maximum variety. He speaks the way as at their times. <laughs> the progressive workers demands to cater to them with the very essence of 40k of the Space Marines would probably be a decision they'd hardly be capable of coming back from. But again, make no mistake, this is merely just the slow boiling of the frog and nothing more, as, yes indeed, there are now female custodies. I've seen a lot of people uh, debate this and whether or not it's real. Well, we do have an excerpt from the Codex. Okay, but he hasn't explained why it's like a retcon yet. This is a 12-minute video. I don't know if he's ever going to explain that. Additional flame, the warship belonged to the mighty Battle of Sola. She lingered in the shadows at the back of the bridge. Custodian Kali Dicia Taurovalia Kesh. And just in case, I've also seen people go like, oh yeah, but isn't definitive? It could be a sister of silence, which, sure, it could. That would be interesting to more fully integrate the two as they are practically, you know, integrated already. But no, later excerpts prove Kesh using a guardian spear. She's a custodies, there is no question about it. And I very much so doubt that Games Workshop somehow managed to make this many, you know, errors in spelling. Don't get me wrong. Errors in spelling. Errors in spell. Who takes you seriously? Who takes you seriously? You, you seem less serious. Why would I take you seriously? GW barely ever <laughs> checks their codexes for writing mistakes, but... Yeah, I mean, they're pretty common with errata in, in, codic in codices. 
this would be a new uh, record even for them. And incidentally as well, I've seen the narrative already beginning to form that, oh, this was very clever, you know, they've never stated that the custodies were all male. Oh, this Guys, remember at the beginning of the stream, I showed you a quote from Aaron Dembski Bowden, who is a writer at Black Library and would be an expert on 40k lore. Aaron Dembski Bowden even mentioned how there's no lore against female custodies. This isn't got anything to do with female space marines. Okay. This is not, of course, true, as we have excerpts from previous codexes describing that all custodians begin their lives as the infant sons of the noble houses of Terra. The sons of the noble houses of Terra. Nope. All custodies are male, as clearly stated in preceding codexes. And any attempt to make you think differently, okay, okay. well, here's, is ignorant. Here's the thing, though, right? So a lot of the lore in the books is kind of considered, like, maybe true, maybe not true, right? But the things that are considered, like, uh, ironclad, like, this is 100% on the ball, on the ball um, is the codices. So if a codices gets updated to include female custodians right then that is the correct answer right because the way that codices are interpreted in the lore community they're considered higher regard than stuff like novels short stories and so on and so forth right it's at best all simply just well malicious and always assume malice what if a custodies is trans huh <laughs> oh boy my thing is there isn't any lore saying they cannot be female is my thing yes that's true right so it says they're taken from the sons of noble houses but it doesn't say they can't come from women they're just saying we took custodies from yeah 10th edition supersedes 7th yes these matters by the way because we know why they want female space marines yes again we uh, like you said we also don't remember we don't know how custodies are made right that's deliberately left as a non-answer so it's completely possible that a noble family had a daughter and not a son and the emperor took the daughter and made a custodian out of her that's completely possible they told us. I did a video on this a little over two or so months ago. The honest anti- Yeah, it doesn't mean there are no women. Maybe at best that there are less women than men at best. Yeah, that's that's what it says. Okay, hold on. What's with all these kami sig sim symbols? What, what, you, what you think Games Workshop is a communist? Wait, 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 that doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> They're a mega corporation. <laughs> they like money. <laughs> fan where a very progressive fella decided to write an article where he made it very clear that he didn't care about female space marines he didn't care about the law behind them or the law justification or there being female models he didn't even really care about the okay so you did a video on some guy covering his opinion and you're equating it to gw what presentation argument he simply cared that games workshop needed to show public support to the left and against the right yeah well that's it that you're just making a okay so you're saying that games workshop is taking this guy's opinion at face value and immediately following with it well then why didn't they just do female space marines from the top Based on your argument there, that doesn't this make any sense. This is a certified sense. hood classic. I know nothing about Warhammer, so this stream is being very enjoyable and informative. I'm so sorry. I know this is such a dorky topic to cover. That's all he cared about. It is simply just a political power play. That is all. That is all it has. But that's like a completely, that's literally the waffles pancakes thing. Again, because now you're just talking about some guy's opinion being like, GW should pander to the left. And so you're saying, well, this is the example. This is GW pandering to the left. This is exactly what I predicted. Like, what? Ever has been, that is all it ever will be. And, of course, just in case you were thinking I was speculating yes again, no, of course not. They will be female space marine. Not a when, a when, not an if.
You're just reading a tweet from some random fucking bucko. What if fuck? What, 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 there's no there's no fucking source here. You're just saying stuff. You're just yapping. Because of course that's true. This is the ideological capture of the franchise happening here in real time. Who who is ideologically capturing it? Who who who? <laughs> hmm, who is it? Could it perhaps be the Jews? We know the custodies are male. And even if it wasn't stated- You fucking asshole. You, you know, you and I both know that there is plenty of conflicting evidence. And I know you know, as a lore channel, that codices supersede old codices. About right, which again, it has been, it would be- He's so fucking wrong. He's just wrong. Weird, very weird indeed, for the custodians to just be like, oh yes, no, we've kept this a secret all this time. Okay, the universe is big. Warhammer is a big universe. Just because something doesn't hasn't been mentioned doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Okay? The Votan have been said to interact with the Imperium repeatedly before their introduction in 9th edition. It doesn't mean that they retconned a setting for the Votan existing. It just means that we didn't mention them before. <laughs> I, I know you've never heard about a male custodian ever before. Not a single mention in the Horus Heresy or any preceding source book. He, he just he just fucked up and said male. Male custodians ever before. Okay. Not a secret all the indeed for the custodians to just be like, oh yes, no, we've kept this a secret all this time. I, it's not that they've kept it a secret. It's just that they didn't mention it. I know you've never heard about a male custodian ever See, be. He said a male custodian. Full, not he a sick, up. single mention in the Horus Heresy or any preceding source books. But I okay, okay, okay. The Horus Heresy just wrapped up, guys. Which, if you don't know, is a sixty-book series series covering one of the most important pieces of history in the lore. Um, and custodians would have played a role in it because at the end of the book, the series, um, I haven't finished it, but the general lore says that. At the end, um, you know, the emperor was attacked upon the golden throne and he needed to be placed upon it in order to save his life after his son Sanguinius died and Horus struck a killing blow um, or something like that. I might be, I'm a little fuzzy on the details um, right now. I'm sorry, this is a lot of nerd shit to remember. Um, but the books kind of focus on the space marines and the primarchs um, and a few other human characters. So they could have introduced a custodies at any point that was a woman during the series of books. Um, but I understand why they didn't, right? I, I don't think, because when you introduce a character in a book, you, you kind of got to flesh them out a bit um, or you end up with weird jokey characters like John Grammaticus and shit like that. I mean, theoretically, can't that one guy who has a clone of Fulgrim theoretically make a female clone of Fulgrim? Oof. Careful, Axis. You're getting a little heretical. Oh, we could totally do this. We've just elected to... But, I, yeah, I, I totally understand why they didn't introduce a female custodian. Um, friend of the channel, Beckett, was like, why, why didn't they mention it in the Horus Heresy? And I, I get it, and it's actually a very good point, and you could have... Um, but I, I do think the Codex is the place where you'd introduce lore that is coherent um, and very this. You know, it's very like this is what is real, right? And then everything else is kind of like the unreliable narrator, right? A lot of those books can be, they can contradict each other where characters can exist at different times. Never, ever, ever at any point told you. And wait, wait. I thought the Sisters of Silence were considered the female custodies. Um, they're considered just as important. You need to keep blanks around for the protection of the Emperor, but um, they they kind of inhabit a different level of power from a custodies. And now there are two of them. And Greg said in regards to the Horus Heresy, Horus lowers his shields on the ship. The Spirit of Vengeance invites the Emperor to a fight. The Emperor shows up with his custodians, who famously are incorruptible from chaos, and Horus causes them to attack the Emperor. Um. 
And just like the Sith, they had all the corruption of them. And just like the Sith, they had... I'm sorry, okay, if your basis of political theory and knowledge is the Sith from Star Wars... Stop talking about politics. <laughs> Vosh pauses every D seconds to yell at his accent. Please send up. <laughs> Herald corruption where they come, of course. And as thing too, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not angry. This is merely just again the final piece of evidence required. If there was anyone out there, anyone whatsoever at all, that thought that 40k could not be subverted, because 40k as a setting is absolutely inherently right wing. The Whoa, pause. What do you mean 40k is inherently right wing? Yeah, like, like the Imperium of Man is a dictatorship? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Imperium in particular is an explicitly right-wing organization. Okay, the Imperium's a right-wing organization. So, <laughs> what does that mean? Does that mean women can't be soldiers? that holds all of the right-wing values. What is a right-wing value in the 41st millennium? 40,000 years in the future is so far removed from our modern-day politics. Okay. Holding virtually none of the left-wing values. The Imperium does not value progress. It does not value fairness. It values tradition. It values honor. It yeah, but they're also inherently anti-religious. Right? Like... <laughs> is it 40k just as right-wing as Helldivers? As in not at all? I mean, they are... Okay. The Imperium of Man is ruled by an immortal monarch who sits upon a throne semi-dead and every day 10,000 people are sacrificed to keep him alive. Right? Right? The Imperium of Man subjugates and enslaves people all the time. There are planets where people work 23-hour shifts every day with an hour to sleep. And when you die, your body is ground into dust and given back as rations to the people who are still alive working in the factories. Okay? So... Um, the... <laughs> Why is some faux British dude with a terrible accent talking about US politics being applied to a tabletop game? Dude needs to stop rolling his R's. Oh, QTV's hood ornament. <laughs> oh, you sweet summer child. Um, it, so Venomous Sock said, it doesn't value scientific progress. Isn't there an organization dedicated to creating better machinery? No. So... One of the factions is called the Adeptus Mechanicus, and they worship technology. They believe the creation of new technology is inherently heretical to their religion. So they focus on finding old things and bringing them back into the Imperium. They can only retrieve technology. They cannot make new technology, right? Belisarius Call who is the Archmagus of the Adeptus Mechanicus, is changing that status quo. And so much so that it is a point of conflict in the universe, right? So people don't like call. Out of, out of setting in the real world, people don't like call because he changes things. He makes Primaris Marines. He makes new technology. He may or may not have an AI, which is considered very much a sin by their religion, right? But this is like saying the developers of Fallout New Vegas are inherently right-wing for including the Legion, yeah. Can they make new tech to help restore old tech? They have to use the tech that already exists to restore the old tech. And in a way, it's kind of new. But it's not. They cannot make new things. They can only retrieve old things that were lost.
values strength. These are the things that the Imperium value. It is an explicit. I don't know if strength is an inherently right-wing value, but okie dokie right-wing project that is simply no question about it. But Games Workshop, however, is a British corporation in Nottingham, England. It is not an explicitly right-wing organization. And what was that quaint saying? Any organization that is not explicitly right-wing will eventually become left-wing? What? Who said that? Adolf Hitler? <laughs> What an insane fucking statement you've just said. You might be actually politically brain dead. <laughs> now, I doubt that one a little bit because there are absolutely ways for a political organization to remain, if not neutral, then at the very least not... Ex I'm sorry, hold on. He does realize that the Imperium of Man is a satire of a xenophobic religious dictatorship, right? Like, <laughs> he knows that, right? <laughs> explicitly left. But in the current day political climate, there's no way for that to happen. Bearing in mind as well that, well, the institutions follow far behind the culture. The culture has already shifted rightwards quite drastically. What? <laughs> But the left is still in possession of all the levers of power. In, in what do you mean the left is in possession of levers of power? What do you mean? What is he talking about? The United States has a left-wing president. What? <laughs> what? Are behind the culture. In my but in the current day political climate, there's no way for that to happen. Bearing in mind as well that, well, the institutions follow far behind the culture. The culture has already shifted rightwards. Who in culture has already shifted rightwards? There's tons of nations that are introducing new legislation in favor of trans and LGBTQ people. Outside of Brexit, I don't see the entire British culture immediately turning into like right-wing fascists. I, I, I don't know if I'd agree with that. I mean, yeah, but a democracy is inherently going to have both sides of the political spectrum constantly arguing back and forth and trying to vie for more power over a system. Quite drastically. But the left is still in possession of all the levers of power. The left is not in possession of all levers of power. That also makes no sense. I mean, tons of the most powerful organizations on Earth could be considered right-wing. I mean, tons of people would argue the military-industrial complex is inherently right-wing. <laughs> like, what does that mean? Those are some of the most powerful... What? <laughs> in institutions and in companies. We're only very recently beginning to see those companies that have suffered after years of financial failure after embracing progressivism like Marvel, for example, begin to slowly turn around like Warner Brothers or Disney. Wait, wait, what? So he's saying that these left-leaning companies are turning around to being right-wing because the right-wing culture is coming back? These companies, after suffering loss after loss after loss after loss, are finally, after like a decade, beginning to look at the ideology that caused them all of this and think- The ideology of the left wing didn't cause these people to go broke. A bunch of fucking creatively bankrupt decisions ruined these people. Okay. Oh my god. I don't- not every single creative decision is made with politics in mind. Some European countries are going a bit right-wing, but that's for reasons completely unrelated to queer social issues. Thinking themselves, this was a terrible idea. What do you mean? I don't see Marvel making a bunch of like strong white men movies. Like I don't, I don't see them producing more Uberman type propaganda. You know, like Captain America's black now. Captain Marvel is the mainstay of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Miss Marvel. <laughs> but as Games Workshop, the fall of GW has not even begun. During COVID, despite... 
I don't understand. Why is he saying that they're turning away from left wing values back to right wing values? I don't know. Cause, cause if you look at other channels, they still say that these are like going woke, you know, like, like if we watch Shadowversity, Marvel's gone woke, Disney's gone woke. But if you watch this guy, he's saying they're turning away from wokeness. The movie Wish had a black girl as the lead. <laughs> Games Workshop's repeated an absurd lamentation that, oh, it's so difficult now. What do you mean lamentation? What are you talking about? They're doing amazingly. Games Workshop is doing amazingly. They're making bread over bread over stacks over stacks. What are you talking about? They completely have a iron grip on the entire fucking miniatures market. Okay? When you think miniatures, you think 40K. You don't think AOS. You don't think Mantic Games. You don't think anybody else. It's just 40K. Oh, they saw an enormous boost in sale. The COVID bump is only finally over now for GW. Now, the boost in sales for GW came from a time when everybody was locked inside from the pandemic. GW literally can't make enough minis to make demand. I don't think they're dying. Yes. As to how badly that deflation of the boost will happen, we'll have to wait and see. Warhammer Plus does not appear to be an economic success from what we've seen from the- Warhammer Plus isn't failing because it's woke. Warhammer Plus has no content to offer subscribers. That is earning reports, but the plastic crack is selling like never before. Games Workshop has managed to reach at least, if not in the mainstream, then as close as they have ever come. And if the project with Henry Cavill actually finally gets off the ground, which is still allegedly in the final phases, then something might finally be produced that will actually break through that mainstream barrier. There's also the ink How much, I'm going to say it now, I will cover this again when the Henry Cavill show comes out. How much you want to say he's going to make a video about it being woke. I'm doing it right now. Clip me for the future. He's going to have an angry video about how 40k has gone woke and Henry Cavill killed it. Marvel killed its comic division with shitty uh, repetitive writing and constant resets. Like with Spider-Man, people were sick and tired of them constantly torturing Peter for no damn reason. It has nothing to do with politics. Yeah. Is it a TV show? But seeing as we heard, I haven't heard anything from that from how many years now? Yeah, I think we can quite safely assume that that's another television project that GW managed to choke out before it became a reality, which is the majority of 40k related entertainment when you go outside the realms of books, at least. As for what effect this will have on 40k, well, here's the thing. Most people will not really notice this because the Custodies are a pseudo-popular faction, but it's probably going to be a lot less popular after this round of nerfs, as also apparently the... I mean, yeah, but I think people collect armies more often for whatever the army is rather than the meta-ness. The meta 40k player is a much smaller minority than the people who collect and enjoy it from that other perspective of, oh, it's fun. I think the narrative of the custodies is cool. Codex is not very well received, and there have also been quite a few allegations that Games Workshop have been banning people on Twitter from complaining about the Codex. Not from complaining- Banning? You mean blocking people? I mean, aren't they allowed to? They're not like a political entity. Like, if it was like the president, yeah, I'd get it. But yeah, I, I, I mean, sure, it sucks that the custodies got nerfed even about the female custodies, but over about the Codex overall. And GW has always been a company that never gave two shits about what anybody else said. They pretend they do now, and they're certainly a hell of a lot better at maintaining the facade. But GW doesn't care. It is the people inside GW that determines what happens. And virtually the entire writing staff is further left than Mao Zedong. To the point- Are you- are you- do you even realize what you just said? <laughs> And GW has always been a company that never gave two shits about what anybody else said. They pretend they do now, and they're certainly a hell of a lot better at maintaining the facade. 
But GW doesn't care. It is the people inside GW that determines what happens. And virtually the entire writing staff is further left than Mao a dog. The entire writing staff of the Black Library is further left than Mao Zedong. What do, what do you mean? I, I've, I've not once seen Dan, Dan Abnett go, we need to line up the bourgeoisie and blow their heads off. We need to starve millions of people. Do you even realize how incredibly left-leaning Mao Zedong was? Okay, do you even realize the, the amount and number of people he killed? He killed millions of people just by collectivizing farms. He starved women and children to death, you fucking idiot moron. <laughs> Some of these people at the Black Library are incredible writers. A source crack pipe. <laughs> oh, yeah. To the point where they're beginning to handshake uh, a certain Austrian man with a mustache at this point, I'd imagine. Point where virtually the entire writing staff is further left than Mao Zedong. To the point where they're beginning to handshake uh, a certain Austrian man with a mustache at this point, I'd imagine. Okay, okay. This guy this guy is an absolute genius. Because you you know that left the famous famous left wing authoritarian guys, Adolf Hitler. You know that famous left wing authoritarian Adolf Hitler? You know the guy who's like, you know, gas the juice, you know the guy. Listen, listen. Arch Arch literally talked about starting a fascist utopia. I just want to say that, okay? <laughs> Imagine. But How do you say that with a straight face? You're a crazy person. How can you compare any of the writing staff to being as incredibly? You literally just said the writing staff has people who are close to Nazis. Okay. And then also said Nazis were left leaning in the same sentence. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> For the rest of us, this will be the final piece of undeniable proof that there is no being neutral here. What you do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Not simply just enjoy 40k and be like, oh, well, you know, it, it'll resist, it'll weather the storm. No, it will not. Nothing else has. Battletech didn't weather the storm. What do you mean? Battletech is an inherently political franchise. What are you fucking talking about? Music, entertainment, movies, television, Star Wars, you can name it, virtually any entity, none of which weathered the storm, and are only now beginning to get dragged back to reality after a decade of failure. And it is entirely likely that Games Workshop is going to require a decade of failure as well. Before what, what are you talking about? You're literally crack pipe Andy right now. What any of this is... <laughs> forget retcon, even halted. GW have begun to carry out irreparable damage to their franchise. What do you mean? I don't... Okay, you haven't... Okay, the allegation here is that... I don't even know how to break down his argument because he didn't really make an argument. I'm almost done. <laughs> Oz, you're an absolute fucking saint. Oh my gosh. I saw you DM me months ago, and I didn't mention, and I, I didn't respond. I need to respond to you. I apologize for that. And they will continue. In all, almost virtually. Okay, okay. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make an argument for Arch that I think is his argument, right? So it starts with female custodies, because they're trying to boil the frog. Right? And it's trying to ease us into the idea of female space marines. That's the allegation. But he's not even making that argument. He's just saying it's f like Games Workshop is just filled with socialists. <laughs> Certainly. Now, sure, seeing as the wider culture is swinging rightwards again, perhaps they'll somehow realize and change course. But I would be very, very surprised. I would be very surprised indeed. And I will simply use this for what it is. Yet further ammunition to prove the point that they themselves have told us again and again. That this is not about the law. This isn't even about representation. Yeah, it's a slippery slope fallacy, yes.
information or any of the supposedly positive things they claim it is about. It is simply about raw political power. Okay, okay, okay. What is GW going to do with all that political power? Like, what, what are they going to seize the means of plastic production? What? Like, what is the conspiracy theory here? What what happens when GW gets its political capital from the left? What do they do? What happens? <laughs> like, what happens next? That's, this is the same thing I asked with Shadowversity. Let's say GW placates to the left that much and they have billions upon billions of dollars. What are they, what are they gonna use their like yeah, are they gonna use their political power to hike mini prices again? <laughs> like actually, actually what if you're a company like GW, right? Let's think about it strategically. If you're running GW and you wanna gain political power, what do you do with that political power? What do you do? Seriously, what do you do with that political power? I would love to talk to Arch about this, by the way. I Arch, you want to explain your theories to me? We can do it on stream, buddy. We'll do it on stream. All right? I know you love to get your dunks in. I'll sit here and I'll let you fucking talk nonsense. Just don't put on a fake accent. But yeah, seriously, I don't know what comes next. Big gay, yeah. <laughs> It is about bending a company and what has, in essence, now become a British institution to... Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Guys, when I think British institutions, I think Parliament, the Royal Family, Games Workshop. <laughs> oh. oh, shit. Yeah, British, the British institution... <laughs> their will. Betting in mind, GW right- GW is gonna lobby Parliament to kill out all the other miniature companies. Right now, it's probably the closest thing that England has to a Disney of their own. To a this is not a it's not a Disney of their own. It's so what about the BBC? major entertainment corporation, particularly considering the potential budding cooperation with Amazon. It is fertile ground indeed for ideological capture. What, what it, why? Okay, they capture your ideology. The left wins. What does the left do then? Make more boring TV shows? <laughs> like... Oh, they make more money. Ultimately, that's at the end of it. That that supersedes all political opinions. <laughs> Obviously, Doctor Who, Games Workshop, and Harry Potter are the biggest British institutions. <laughs> Which, of course, has always been the stated, the explicitly explained goal of the wokest movement. The wokest movement. You're you're actually crazy. You're like actually insane. This guy is unwell. This guy is mentally unwell. <laughs> so, um... GW's gonna get all the power then put estrogen in the plastic, yes. Let me, uh, let me, let me borrow a phrase from the opposition here. Do not let this dishearten you. Let this radicalize you. <laughs> excuse me? Excuse me? Uh, is he trying to... He's trying to... He's trying to radicalize me to the right guys. This guy's trying to make me a neo-Nazi. Did you hear that? <laughs> Don't let it dishearten you. Let it radicalize you. Uh, actually, the uh, political polarization of society is a good thing, says this guy. Chud Hammer says millions must die. <laughs> that laugh. This guy's. This guy's a Nazi. This guy is a Nazi, bro. Next time, I have been Arch. Thank you very much for watching. And I do hope to see you and many others very, very soon. I'm sure soon. Have a good day. I will be on much longer. Um, I'm going to take a piss. Oz uh, said he's exporting math. <laughs>
Um, so we'll be able to take a look at his old Christchurch video, and then we will put it up on Internet Archive. Um, let me go take a piss. Ah. Ah. I, okay, I really thought Shadowversity was bad. This guy is really, kind of freaks me to fuck out. This guy freaks me to fuck out. <laughs> this guy is a straight up villain. It's like an Austin Powers villain. <laughs> okay to seriously copy his train of thought. I assume he thinks Big Gay wants power over the media to influence us and our children to, like dick or something like. Yeah, maybe I don't. I don't I, that has to be it, right? <sighs> um. Okay. I'll um be back. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm back. Um, so amongst my friend group, there's been some discussion of uh, the the female custodies thing. <laughs> guys, England has fallen. They took Big Ben. Now she's Big Betty. <laughs> Thank you, Sugar. <laughs> okay. Um, let me let me tell you why you're wrong, uh, friend. <laughs> that i know who is my friend uh here for the creed roast perfect timing pal um so we in our D D crew were to discussing uh the female custodies um oh boy uh and creed's opinion i did wash my hands creed's opinion was i think it's dumb because now we got to get rid of all the cool female factions because God forbid no one acknowledges the Sisters of Silence. Uh, another guy responds, I think you made that up. 
who said they were getting rid of the female factions? Easy. Model cell space marines. Easy. Model oh. cell space marines are the highest demanding models. Uh, just type the age of Sigmar. You would understand that it's really stupid for them. To what the fuck are you saying, Green? <laughs> Get, get in here. Get in here right now. <laughs> I need you to reiterate your point to me right now, word for word. <laughs> get him here now. <laughs> I need to him. I don't want to misrepresent his point. <laughs> I'm waiting. And I did see that Oz sent the video. It's here. <laughs> he refuses. Of course he fucking refuses. Drag him. <laughs> Don't do it. It's a trap. Do I drag him? Do I drag him, guys? I think they're playing Hell Divers or some game right now. Do I drag him? <laughs> Hold on. Creed wants to argue with you. Is that okay? Because you're wrong and stupid. Okay, fine. I'll drag him right now. Hi, Creed. I fucking hate people so much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't want to do this, but of course, fucking cat had to do it. So anyway. What do you, what do you mean? It was it was Justin who told you who said it. He no. said Creed wants to argue with you. No, I didn't. I didn't. That's the thing. I didn't. Okay, <laughs> okay. I, will will politely, I will politely be quiet and let you state your point okay well my point is it's mostly uh from a business standpoint it's just like we have so many models for gw that have like bat sisters of battle and the sisters of silence which do need models and them introducing a custody female is kind of stupid in my opinion because it's really out of the blue like i don't mind if you have a female custodies i just want it to make sense that's it mm-hmm and when we add like different models to the range we start getting rid of models for example if you follow age of sigmar they're getting rid of a huge array of models for no exact reason some models do need to be updated but majority of them kind of don't and that's my problem mm. that's my main problem it's from a business standpoint because gw in their brilliant minds can easily just get rid of like you know Mounts of lore and also cool models like they did with Old World. Then back paddle and bring back more of these models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're not getting rid of any of the Sisters of Battle or Sisters of Silence. There's just going to be an alternate model of a Custodes that has, like, what, a slimmer frame? Or it could be just a different head customization, which is, in, a which is fine. That's fine. That's fine. But I don't trust GW because it just like they always say this and they'll just do the exact opposite. That's my entire argument. I should have made that clear. I just don't trust a company because they will do the exact opposite every time. That was different than I, the opinion you mentioned in, <laughs> in general. Oh, one hundred percent. Because I'm just sitting there, like it was just a basic are, opinion. Are you are you like, walking it back right. now? Because you're no, I'm not walking. With me. No, I'm not walking it back. No, this is my clear opinion. Mm. I just don't trust. A, I just don't trust the company. I even said it in the, in the Discord. What, like, what, hey, look at Age of Sigmar. What do you mean uh, by I think it's dumb because now we got to get rid of all the cool female factions. Oh, because, again, like I said before, I don't trust GW to keep these factions going because when you look at the business standpoint, Space Marines or anything kind of like heavy armored sells a lot. Mm. So why so why would they get rid of Sisters of Battle? Seems like they've kind of fit in quite nicely there. Well, again, that's my speculation. Again, I'm one, I can be 100% completely wrong, but I just, again, like I said before, I do not trust the company. 
Uh-huh. Because they did this with they did this with multiple factions. And they changed different lores. They did different factions. They changed different models and just made everything just a jumble mesh just to sell a profit. Mm. <laughs> I don't care if you have a female space. Ha- Hal is saying care. that you're a hundred percent backpedaling. Right now. Well, of course she does. Of course she does. Uh, That's why I didn't want to come up here because I I know this is going to be a losing battle. But you know I'm just here. Uh, you said after that because God forbid no one acknowledges the Sisters of Silence. Oh God, yeah, and barely anyone notices them. One hundred percent. I'm going to keep that. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. stupid as shit. Like I'd rather just see them get new models than having like a Dentus Custodes female. I mean, they've, I always, all the models... they've always just been a separate kind of regiment to go with the Custodes rather than their own. Yeah, characters. and I want them to be more fleshed out because they they're cool ass characters. I love them. But but what does a female custodian is that? How is that going to take away from them existing? They still exist. I don't know. It's just again, like I said, just I don't trust the company. Mm. Well, yeah, they did. And get again, rid of I know it's a, 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 a surface level argument, but I'm not I'm not making the argument be like, oh my god, because lore wise is gay. Mm. I just think like they'll just get rid of more models, and then I have nothing else to look at. Okay, okay, okay. I won't drag you on stream. I know you're uh, yeah, sitting there I, sweating right I, now. I know because I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't want to be here because I'm like, oh, like one. I wanted to flesh out this argument more, and I just, I did want to have a conversation about it, but I just mm. not as good. Oh shit! Oh well, yeah, you hey, you got entertainment, so I'm, I'm happy for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you, Creed, for stating your point. Yeah. I, I, You're we, welcome. Need, we needed some anti-female custodies opinions this evening. Yeah, yeah. Don't um, worry, I gave you the entertainment. Oh, tr- trust me. You're like the this. There was worse. You missed. Hey, Diesel, this your boy? Yes, this is one of my boys. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. He's he's our resident Warhammer Andy. Uh, he is also a Black Templars fan. Uh, that also comes with a bunch of uh, funny gags associated with it, yes. <laughs> Black Templars, best faction. Next to Black Legion. Oh, well, yeah, you did move to Black Legion. I think I think. Oh, I love Black Legion. A lot more fun. They're, yeah, because they can, yeah, they can bring out much more shit and they can actually have like a lot more marks. That's why. Uh, Creed, they're saying it sounds like he just wants less women so he can kiss the bros. I'm just saying. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't care. No, it's not about that. No, because I love Sisters of Battle. They're fucking badass space nuns. Like in Sisters of Silence, a witch covenant that pretty much have no souls and uh negate any second ability. That's badass as fuck. Like, come on. Well, with with I that guess... creed, in, instead of me uh roasting the shit out of you, I will let you leave with honor intact. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> sorry I couldn't get you a better argument. No, <laughs> it wasn't it's okay. Prepared, it's mostly. okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the thing you said in chat is wrong and stupid, though. But you know, oh, that's one hundred percent. That's understandable. Again, disagree. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you too, buddy. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent backpedal. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent backpedal. Oh shit, that was funny. Uh... Okay, Oz sent the Christchurch video. <sighs> Diesel summoned his friend so he can bully him. <laughs> See, listen, everybody's got that one guy in their friend group. That is that guy. So, um, anyway, shout out to Oz for doing this. This was very nice of you. You didn't need to do it. Um, <laughs> you very much clearly wanted to help get the own on this guy. That's for sure. <laughs> uh
trends. We are unfortunately going to have to talk a little bit about the Christchurch terror attack because I feel that the industry's response to it and companies' response in particular deserve mentioning and discussion. Now, I'm going to do this in the old style because I'm going to have to choose my words somewhat carefully here to make sure there is no misunderstanding because this is a very very delicate subject, ably demonstrated by the fact that in New Zealand, an 18-year-old man is currently charged for distributing the video of the shooting. He has been denied bail, and he faces 14 years... He edited Davash out. An improvement, if we're being honest. ...in prison, merely for sharing the video. Okay, okay. Let me tell you why. Okay, first of all... <laughs> I don't, I don't know if you should go to jail for sharing that. I'm an American, so obviously we believe in, you know, uh, freedom of speech. Um, but sharing that, I think, is abhorrently disgusting. That's like sharing... You're sharing a wanton murder of people being killed, okay? You only do that for shock value or because, like, you support it, right? Live watch reaction. He was not involved in any other way. He simply just posted a video link. So okay, but why did he post a video? What was the reasoning behind that? Okay, I understand what the action is, but if I was a betting man, I think you should go to social jail at least. Point and laugh. Yeah. So, I will be trying to... Now it's just a video and a size queen in the corner. <laughs> ...cover my bases here a wee bit. I will also leave the video unmonetized, so if you see ads on the video, please do let me know, and I will try to correct it. So, the general situation appears to be that several companies are pulling their advertisements from several platforms that they feel did not act swiftly or comprehensively enough to remove the video of the shooting and the shooter's manifesto from their platforms. This has resulted in companies like Burger King, ASB, Spark, and several other companies pulling their advertisement from platforms like Google and Facebook. Okay, so on the basis of this shooting being shared, places like Burger King reneged on their advertising. Okay, so let me tell you something that companies do. A company wants to get better rates of advertising online. You're a big mega corporation. You have a direct line of contact with Google. A tragedy happens. How do you as a company take advantage of that? How can it benefit you? I know this seems evil, but this is the reality of it, right? You say, listen, you're, you're promoting hate speech. I'm pulling my ads. You pull your ads. The website suffers for a bit. You come back, you go, hey, we want to advertise, but we want a better rate. You burned us before. It might be a controversial opinion, but I think shock gore videos should be treated like sharing around pedophile content, to be honest. Um... People monetizing off of the agony and pain of people. Yeah, both are monetizing off the agony and pain of people. Yeah, I, I, I get that argument. I definitely see it. I think that's a pretty solid argument for that. Um, I think I don't really have anything to say against it personally. Um, I know I've seen a, quite a quite a lot of shock content in my day. Yeah, I think it was a bit sketch to put him in jail for 14 years about it. 14 years, yeah, but sharing it is weird. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, these companies appear to have done everything they can to limit access to these things. Facebook alone has removed millions... Why, why should you have ready access to a POV of a shooting? Okay. Like, why should you have ready access to a VOD of a live stream of people being murdered? That's, I, I think it should be hard to come by, right? Like, <laughs> ...of mentions of the video, and I do not think it reasonable to claim that these platforms need to do... Guys, this is a 40k lore YouTuber, okay, They're talking about the Christchurch shooting. ...more 
as I think they're already doing everything within their power, even overreaching a fair bit, even removing edited videos that did not show graphic content. Videos that are, of course, also being used right now by mainstream media sources. And of yeah, it's a, it's a, it, I will say that it is fair how news can get away with showing things worse than like somebody like me can. But you know what? That's kind of the cards that I'm dealt. I deal with it, whatever. Of course, the censorship does not limit itself to the removal of the manifesto and the videos of the shooting itself. Many companies have also promised additional measures like, for example, Discount Domains, a New Zealand-based company that has announced that they will have a zero-tolerance policy for anything that is related to the terrorist attack. Okay, but that's a New Zealand company. They are probably personally affected by it. That's probably an incredibly harrowing experience to happen to a country. I'm American. I remember 9-11. That's a funny thing to clip out of context. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and will take down domain and websites without warning. And they will do this to ensure that their customers are aligned with them on grounds of moral and social responsibilities. To sum it all up, up a bit quickly and nicely, there is a lot of people and a lot of a companies lot of reacting very right. violently to very anything violently. that is related to the terrorist incident. Another example would be Discord, which is flat out deleting servers that have even hosted mere discussion of the incident. Tempers are clearly running quite hot all across the internet, but it is precisely during these times that we need to have a cool head and actually look at what we are trying to do and the potential ramifications and meanings of those things. Guys, guys, if I delete the Christchurch shooting video from YouTube, that's like a slippery slope to my Chud Hammer videos being taken off of YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is fucking annoying. I can't believe you just went through this. And to help me oh. illustrate my point here, I'm going to show you an article from, from GamesIndustry.biz titled Community Management post Christchurch Massacre Opinion. Now, this is, of course, an opinion piece by a veteran product manager named James Kozanitschke, who's currently working for Wargaming. Now, of course, I'm sure that he is an entirely decent individual, but I will nevertheless use his article to exemplify what I mean, the potential problems with the kind of overreach and how many people... Guys, here's how the Christchurch shooting will impact me. The 40k lore YouTuber. You see, I have many opinions on 40k, and they are violently suppressed by the YouTube algorithm. Um, because I think uh, fascism is cool, actually. <laughs> might direct their anger in places where it simply should not be directed. So, James here is of the opinion that it is time to crack down on the toxic behavior and trolling because of the Christchurch shooting. Now you Yeah, because people's idea of trolling was, oh, let me post this picture of a family and the place be killed. That's not trolling. That's a little worse. Might wonder, how exactly do we go from a terrorist attack to toxic behavior and trolling on the internet? And apparently, James thinks it is because the shooter's beliefs were shaped on the internet. Quoting, in the alleged terrorist manifesto, he talked about a variety of political topics, but it is his shitposting and regular dropping of memes which stands out the most. Clearly, internet culture has played a role in shaping his beliefs. And okay. <laughs> yes, internet, it, it radicalized him, but it's not the memes that were the standout part of his beliefs. Right, so th this guy's kind of missing the forest for the trees in the opinion piece, but it, it <laughs> if a meme is like, I love killing the Jews, if that's the meme, I, you know, maybe it, maybe it signifies something else, I don't know. <laughs> Quote. Now, the problem with this sentence is that it assumes a lot of things. First and foremost, it takes all of the various memes and shitposting in the manifesto at face value. And it takes all the memes and shitposting at face value. Let's see. Hmm, a neo-Nazi makes jokes about ethnicity and minority groups. Hmm, yeah, I think I could take those at face value. So this is what forms the fundamental belief of the shooter, despite the fact that the shooter actually lays out his ideology and his reasoning quite clearly in the manifesto, and even specifically denies that the... Guys, guys, we're reading the shooter lore right now, okay? Shooter 40k lore. Internet was what radicalized him. He himself states that he was radicalized during his travels in Europe, where he saw what he perceived to be the problem that made him think that his extreme actions were justified and the only solution. Now, I hasten to clarify that this is in no way, shape, or form my opinions. I do not condone his actions in any way, shape, or form or whatsoever. Guys, I'm not a proponent of shooting people, just so we know. Anyway, I will build my fascist utopia without spilling a drop of blood, as is famous.
ever. But I do not think we can simply dismiss him when he says, no, I was not radicalized on the internet. In fact, I am now going to tell you why and how. I yeah, jokes relating to your beliefs or Fed posting. Yeah, like Fed posting extravaganza, bro, with this guy. I was radicalized. And whilst, of course, we should take anything he says with a grain of salt, let me put it like this. If you had the choice to believe whether or not he was radicalized because he traveled through Europe and saw what he perceived to be great and in many cases, unfortunately, real and existing problems with mass immigration or that he was radicalized via meme culture on the Internet, well, I certainly know which one I think is more plausible. Okay, these things don't happen in a vacuum, right? Like you explore Europe and then you go back and you have discussions with other people that have like-minded things. People... <laughs> Dudes are reading a manifesto like he's Erebus. <laughs> oh my god. I, you know, I wish Beckett was awake right now because Beckett could give some really interesting, um, educated opinions on these things. Um, god, I gotta get him on stream for something like this. But clearly, the author of this article is of a different opinion. He says, again, quoting, the days of ignorantly being able to claim, oh, it's just a meme, it's harmless, are over, end quote. Again, it is just a meme. You should not allow the terrorist to tell you what you want to hear. Clearly, this person is already off. Listen, I understand Pepe is Pepe, right? But then when Pepe is yelling in Yiddish and taking over the world and working with Hillary Clinton in the meme, maybe that meme's a bit of something else opinion that toxic behavior is bad he also refers to gamergate as an organized harassment campaign oh my god gamergate 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 Every, i can't escape gamergate guys it's been a decade guys tone we decide what is and isn't acceptable we decide how to deal with this problem before it spreads through the community and into the real world end quote the author clearly sees it as his moral responsibility to censor guide and control the conversation in a way that fits his own moral sensibilities Ironically, once again, the shooter's manifesto seems to quite clearly suggest that this is exactly one of the problems that radicalized him in the first place. Seeing problems as he traveled across the world with his own eyes, and then seeing the mainstream media and various communities, quote unquote, simply ignoring and or actively censoring any discussion about the problem. And surely, Okay, all right. Do... So so the internet was you is, is a part of why he was radicalized. So how can you How can you say that wasn't the case? Because you're saying it is, and then turning around and saying it isn't. The horse armor to fascism pipeline. <laughs> Gamergate is one of those things that you just had to be there. Yeah. Like, I, I honestly, people looking back on it, trying to cover it as a historical event, seem to completely ignore the people who were there. You know? Like, I remember it. It was a very present experience deny that that is actually happening indeed further on in the article we get a wonderful example of just that quoting yet again setting stricter rules and actively enforcing them without fear of how it will impact the bottom line will probably cost organization players readers but okay if you're in a game and you call someone the n-word that's just i mean you probably shouldn't do it I, it's, <laughs> guys don't call people the n-word <laughs> sorry i know i'm full of hot takes today the social responsibility we have as custodians of online communities demands it, end quote. Once again, reinforcing his own belief that he is responsible for this, that it, it is his job to prevent these people from speaking in the way they choose, or from spreading the dangerous memes as he sees them. Another speaking the way they choose, yeah, well, they're saying this Mein Kampf guy is kind of based. I don't know the fucking thing. <laughs> quote. I've seen numerous brands play down or ignore anti-social behavior of key community members due to their financial or social importance to the business. Oh, it's just a racial slur or homophobic remark, they say, as they attempt to reform a toxic player and keep them as a customer, yet again, rather than send them away, end quote. Now, the thing is, I am sure that he has some examples of this, but we have seen time and time and time again, both in gaming, in movies, and in various medias, corporations lashing out violently against their fan base over what they perceive to be toxic behavior. So I do not think that his version of events here, that this is a constant, and that all the companies are worried about this and just excuse it is true. In fact, I think the exact opposite. Okay, I gotta be... A all right, guys, I want you to picture the time when he made this video. It's days after the Christchurch shooting. Everybody, everybody saw the shooting on Twitter, on YouTube, all over the news. This is one of the most harrowing experiences people have seen. It became a YouTube thing because the shooter deliberately invoked PewDiePie's name. Okay. PewDiePie was so hurt by seeing that. All right. There are people mourning. There's serious discussion in New Zealand about guns rights and issues related to that. Okay. 
This couldn't be more serious. And then this guy makes a video about toxicity in gaming using this as the basis of his argument. Saying, hey guys, they dis they misrepresented the crazy guy's manifesto because they want you to not be an asshole in Overwatch. <laughs> All right. Arch. Arch Warhammer, let's read the room. Does this seem like the kind of time and place for you to be making a statement about how the media is reacting to gamers? Is this the time and place to be making these opinions? I don't think so. One second, I got a I got a text. This was during a time when edgy jokes about fascism was meta, but it later turned out half the people making the jokes were actually serious, not memeing. <laughs> it's true. I think that it is the very treatment of these people as potential criminal, toxic, Here. and unwanted members of communities that is causing their feeling of isolation, of alienation. Not, and when you isolate and alienate someone, you tell them over and over again, you are a problem, you are evil, you are bad, you are the, the problem, you are evil, you are bad. Eventually, they, they might actually come to believe that you are correct. Okay. All right. I got to be frank. I think this guy might have been a little bit more crazy, and I don't think it was the journalist who made him do it. Okay? I don't think the journalist made him a mass murderer. Just an idea. And, of course, he goes on to suggest just that. Quoting, further, we shouldn't be afraid of taking permanent steps to eliminate inflammatory members from our community. End quote. Suggesting just that exact type of isolation over toxic behavior and memes. But, of course, all of this is nothing new, is it? This has happened before, time and time and time again. There are so many examples of this. I could probably make a list and keep writing. Yeah, he's venting. He's, he's self-reporting because he's like, the journos are saying I'm the bad guy and I'm kind of internalizing that. That's what he's doing pretty much the whole goddamn day. This is normal now. This is the norm. And guess what? Again, in the Shooter's Manifesto, he apparently counted upon his actions further increasing the divide. He wanted to further radicalize society. He wanted to further... Yeah, no shit. The radical wants to radicalize society. Wow. It's almost like he wants to act as a martyr for a cause. Wow. Oh, ooh, big political thinker here, Arch. Split society between the people but like the author here who believes it is his social and moral responsibility to police his community and remove what he considers uh. to be inflammatory elements once again to increase the divide the shooter wanted to divide society between those who considered themselves unequivocally just and those who they considered to be unequivocally evil and so presumably without knowing so at all james here is playing you I, this guy is taking the okay again time and place time and place time and place is this the time and place to be making this argument yeah, the female space marines made him this crazy, guys. ...playing right into the terrorist's hands. He is handing him the very thing he wants the most. Further polarization of society. And ask yourself, will this help? Will this gain us anything? Will kicking out... I hate Vosh so much. <laughs> ...and further isolating those we already shun? Already try to isolate? Already attack? Will further attacks upon them make them think better of us? Will it de-radicalize them? Or will it push them yet further into the hands of men like the shooter? I think the answer to that question is pretty obvious. <sighs> okay. That was some heavy shit, but I... That was heavy shit. Uh, this is, there is a time and a place to make this kind of argument, Arch. Like, bruh. <laughs> Felt a real All need. Right. That's enough. Fuck you, cunt. <laughs> uh, 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 we weird based opinion from Bosch. <laughs> 
Looks like Vosh's handler keeps hitting the reset button. <laughs> All right. <sighs> yeah, he's allowed one win. <laughs> one win from Vosh. We're going to make sure that goes up on Internet Archive. I think we're going to make a... If one of the mods hasn't done it already, can we make a thread on Arch uh, Warhammer? Um, I think that would be very fun. I have a feeling this will also be a part two. <laughs> You're supposed to wait at least months before you meme a national tragedy. <laughs> game dev brags about having zero white males in game. Let's look at that one. There already is one. Thank you. I like how he's playing Andy and Lele. I, I kind of feel like the game is not for you, Arch. <laughs> the biggest danger to Helldivers 2 is developers versus players mentality. Oh my god, there's so many I want to look at. Okay, let's and look at this. And then they started calling Helldivers 2 fascist. Exactly. Okay, the... <laughs> Exactly like I said they would. Fuck off. This guy thinks he's so smart. I want to knock his block off in Minecraft. So, if you, like we'll everyone really else on Earth, has been playing Helldivers 2 obsessively ever since launch, then you may have noticed a little bit of a drama that went on uh, late last week, after the much-awaited patch notes were released, and after one of the developers made a bit of an antagonistic statement, shall we say. This combined with the fact that the patch notes were primarily nerfs to effective strategies that were meta at the time, and the fact that the mech suits were perhaps not what everyone had anticipated and expected, led to a fair bit of general unrest, shall we say. And I want to talk about this. Can we call it the Red Arch Warhammer's Great Crusade? Because this, if there is any threat to Helldivers 2 as it stands right now, it is first and foremost the developer versus player mentality that I have seen creep into a fair few games in the past. So, at this point, the drama is in essence already over, and I wanted to wait to see for the you know, full reaction of it all to work out, as there have been pleas for unity, of course, as the adorable cat here, uh, but also a fair That is a hamster, you fucking troglodyte. Of salt having emerged after the antagonistic comments. Addo had refused to buff mechs for years. To anyone saying that they need to improve the mechs, they're probably not going to. There really was need to, no need to lie like this. A heavily armored walking exoskeleton is not very heavily armored, no. And uh, Addo had apparently not putting all of the changes in the patch notes. Now, this in all your likelihood simply just has to do with, well, character limits, I'd imagine, and the fact that not everything needs to be spelled out. And the developer in question, it is very important to point out, has already also already apologized for basically just being a bit hot headed, right? So everything's fine, right? But. This, this is also boiling over a little bit in the stop being so meta. <laughs> you ever met a girl, kid? Yeah, Bar yeah, Arch, you ever met a girl? Where's your barefoot housewife, Arch? At least Shadowversity can ruin some woman's life with four children. Uh, direction of things as well. So let me talk about what I mean when I say developers versus players. Because... My favorite example of this is Games Labs, without a shadow of a doubt. Now, Games Labs have made some excellent strategy games, many of which I have played and thoroughly enjoyed, but one of their best and worst creations is Ultimate General's Civil War. It's an excellent game, in all due honesty, which I hardly do recommend, but it was rife with this, where the players would come Oh my god, it's only been two minutes. This guy's a fucking... doesn't shut the fuck up. ...up with some way of beating a level, or beating a challenge, or overcoming some great obstacle with apparent ease, and then bragging on it about it to the developers, going, oh hey, look, I beat this level with no casualties at all. I wiped out the entire Union army. <laughs> Aren't I good at your silly unbalanced video game? Why, why'd you say? Why'd you say you were playing as the Confederates? What you mean by that? What you mean by that? Huh? What you mean by that? If that was somebody else, I wouldn't think anything of it. Why'd you say it like that? Huh? You mean the Union army? You wiped them out. What army are you fighting for, Arch? Hmm? They, were, they were fighting for states' rights, huh? States' rights over what? <laughs> 
Alolan Shadowversary. <laughs> and the developer would then respond in a little bit of a huff, like, how, how dare you do this? Ah. And then they'd change it in the patch notes afterwards to increase the number of enemy troops, or increase their reinforcements rate, or in some way make the game harder, because some people who tried very hard only finding new towns on this a trend towards people, it, he's game, literally and it, you could avoid about nothing. Holy shit. As... I mentioned this in a couple of videos previously, that the first step that would come out of the progressive side when Helldivers 2 became popular was to first try to infiltrate it. We saw this in the Helldivers 2. Yeah, 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 they're trying to infiltrate Helldivers. Guy, guy you know Helldiver, Super Earth is, is, a, is, a, is a parody, okay? Ban's politics video, where we had a look at an account called Helldivers Alert, which presented itself as an official account, but was in fact a fan account, which said, don't remember, don't be a fascist, etc. Beginning the slow push of beginning to move political ideas into Helldivers. However, the Helldivers developers then did something very clever. Realizing that their video game would now inevitably be used as an arena for political discourse, they simply said, let's not do that at all. Let us enforce 100% neutrality by simply banning the conversation completely. And that was the correct move, though... Whoa, whoa, whoa. arch, arch. Are you seriously calling for bannings when it fits your political agenda? Weren't you just complaining about Games Workshop doing this because they were being woke moralists? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> How is this okay but the other one not? There have been some potential breaks in that barrier, as we covered a couple days ago. One of the community managers mentioned that they were not, apparently, banning people for LGBTQ nonsense, etc. They were only banning the people on the opposite side of the spectrum. This has since not been commentated on. No, we only banned the bigots, transphobes, homophobes, racists, etc. They're not welcome in our community. We had to restrict topics in Helldivers 2 general chats for a while, because we're drinking massive waves of hate speech, which our staff is struggling with emotionally. Okay. That's like a normal statement, and he's like politicizing it in the weirdest way. Though there have been several rumors that a lot more people have been banned from their Discord. Oh, I know they don't care, Cloudy, right? But, you know, it's just to point out the inconsistency. Thought as well. Now, I have popped onto their Discord briefly. I did see some people arguing that the game was fascist, quite openly, usually with the flags in their bio, not being... Yeah, it's the flags in their bio. It is... The game is a parody of fascist propaganda, of far... Yeah, far-right propaganda, yes. Banned. And I did also see them apparently arguing with people who weren't on the server anymore, so that seems suspicious, but I'm not going to say anything categoric on that account, as I haven't really been able to see any confirmed instances so far of people being banned for their politics or arguing against their being politics. First they came for the bigots that I did not speak. Text, so we of salt, etc. This, however, was the moment of weakness, because as I mentioned again, the mainstream media was itching to call Helldivers fascist. They were desperate to do it, but they couldn't do Sargon it. Sargon made a video about the liberals defending the bugs. I... I'm gonna watch that video, aren't I? It ...right away, because the game was way too popular. If they did it, they would only cutting, be cutting away at their own support even earlier and even quicker than they already are. They needed a moment of weakness, and this... The, these guys are so far right, they are making me left. Oh god, I'm being radicalized. Not the way they want was that moment. The moment this started kicking up, the same day this started appearing. Yeah, you're a fascist in Helldivers 2, but it's also intentionally over the top that it's impossible not to smile. Helldivers 2 comedy comes from propaganda, that's why it's so fun. Did you even read these fucking articles, you fucking mongoloid? You are a piece of propaganda. The Helldivers, that entire intro is propaganda. Wait, are we the baddies? Same day, day thereafter. Helldivers 2 politics appear to be flying over the head. Oh my god, media literacy is dead. I can't believe I'm seeing a second white guy miss the fucking point about Starship Troopers and Helldivers. Of some, within practically a day, we saw three to four articles come out, all in essence saying, yeah, no, Helldivers is definitely fascist, but we're totally digging. No, you fucking moron, you fucking moron. Oh my god. Are you serious? <laughs> You can't be serious. It, guys, which is the soft beginning entry point into essentially beginning to tar the company and the game with the label of fascist. Because here's what comes. Not... Okay, people calling the company Arrowhead fascists are stupid, but these articles are about how Hell Divers Two is like. It's doing the Starship Troopers thing of like, oh, it's, it's propaganda, like parody. What's next? They were unsuccessful in infiltrating Hell Divers Two using soft power, and here's. The Whoa, Diesel, you gotta get your phrenology right. He's a Caucasoid. <laughs> the thing. 
Progressivism cannot exist in a politically neutral state because in a neutral state, progressivism, which is inherently racist and sexist, cannot. Oh my god. <laughs> Not exist in our current society. They require repressive tolerance to get anywhere. This is why they began with the vanguard demand of, hey, give us LGBTQ and trans capes. That vanguard demand was not met, and so it escalates. This is all just- Okay, well, like, some people wanted LGBT capes. I'm sure hell divers could do that in a way that's, like, fun in, like, you know, in lore. But if they don't do it, then fine, like... But, like, you're missing the point about how hell divers too is parody based through pop propaganda hell divers 2 makes jokes about utilizing child labor and child soldiers to fight the automatons just the slow grind of the m mainstream gaming media beginning to move in on hell divers 2 as we have seen them done they're not moving in on hell divers 2 and anybody who is is actually missing the point just like you to so many other i can't i guys i, I can't believe that this has been such an easy filter that people haven't been able to get through. Like, I actually don't know if these guys believe what they're saying or if they're just saying it to say it. Because this video is almost like the exact same as Shadowversity's video. Titles. Now, if they were calling Super Earth fascist in and of itself, at least they would have an argument, but they're not. They're calling the game fascist. They're calling the fans who like it fascist by saying that they don't get that it's satire, etc. And again, if they were... So do you get it? <laughs> you get it because you've just signaled that you don't. And Super Earth is fascist. <laughs> We're calling Super Earth fascist, they might at least have potentially an argument, as it sort of depends on the AI. In law, the AI is said to receive a handful of answers from each individual person. From these answers... No, 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 no. You're wrong. When you and go and vote for a president in Helldivers, the AI decides it for you. So you don't get a vote. The AI picks the best candidate for you. The AI then the democracy is fake and controlled by an AI that you don't even know if it's actually controlled by an AI. It could be controlled by a ruling elite. It could be controlled by the Illuminate. It could be controlled by something else. And determines who you are supposed to be voting for by going through all of your interests and your needs, etc. And then cross-referencing that against the available candidates and going, okay, you should vote for this guy. It no, you don't get a choice in who you vote for. It's chosen for you. <laughs> Cool anime girls, thank you for becoming an anime an anime gas station. <laughs> and also, thank you for gifting Shiny a membership. I wonder who I'll be allowed to vote for this election season. Helldivers 2 ship crew. Guys, the liberals are in my walls. What do I do? Uh, you gotta get Jordan Peterson to come over, and he'll help you clean your room, and then the liberals will leave. If that system works like that, and it suggests the candidate that it would suit your personal requirements and beliefs best, then that is- No, what are you- what are- like, he's- like, what- like... Not fascism. If, however- That is- no. You don't get a choice in who you vote for. They choose it for you. It's all fake. The answer to every single set of questions is, what you require right now, sir, is a strong state. Then you might have a reasonable. Oh my god, this guy is fucking stupid. He's not paying attention. This guy's fucking stupid. Argument for fascism. But amusingly enough, of course, is that. No, no. Okay, super. <laughs> Fuck off, this guy's so stupid. This is actually a quite common talking point on the left. New research and Trump voters, they're not the sharpest tools in the box. You're not even American, fuckface. <laughs> I think this guy is getting to your ability to talk. I know, he's literally he's literally wrong about the Helldivers 2 lore, which takes like five seconds to figure out because there's not that much writing on it. To beat Trump, we need to know why Americans keep voting for him. Psychologists may have the answer. For years now, we've been essentially bombarded with the idea- Wait, so he's- Wait, so he's in the joke that Helldivers is satire, but he doesn't understand that the articles are also on the joke and thinks they're calling the company fascist. Yes, because he didn't read the articles. This isn't even the illusion of choice situation. People are straight up aware they don't actually get to choose their vote. Yes, Sugar. Yep, yep, yep. And he seems to not understand that. He thinks that they do a background check on you 
and then you get the choice to choose the best choice for you. <laughs> yeah, but if you vote for Trump, you simply just don't know what's good for you. You you don't understand. You're dumb. You're low IQ. You're the basket of deplorables. Don't you get it? We know what's best for you. This is not. This is. This is. This is not. I can't believe he's equating this to wokeism. For this group of people, to criticize the idea of the super AI voting for you is deliciously ironic, in my opinion, as half of these people would probably throw themselves on the mercy of the AI within five seconds. And this, of course... I don't... I honestly... His... I don't know if he's in on a joke or not, because he signals both ways. Also then gets led into this thing here. So Grums was kind of on the forefront of this shitstorm, which is still developing at the moment. Grums is a fucking hack. ...with no official statement from Arrowhead at the time of recording, where he simply says, protect her livers, keep it politically free. Now this also where this comes in, right? Wait a second, what was that profile picture you had, Arch? ...of recording, where he simply says... Is that... Is that an Iron Cross? <laughs> Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, fuck, I got a little worried. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> really close, all right. All right, all right. Sorry, it was signaling something else. Sorry, sorry, I see it in my... It's in my walls. The neo-Nazis are in my walls, guys. Is he a brony? Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. He's a he's a bro he's okay. The Hearts of Iron Brony fascist thing is He's a Brony? He's a he's a Hearts of Iron fascist brony. What, what, what did they make this guy in a lab? This guy is like the 4chan guy came to... <laughs> it's apparently his April Fool's thing. He just does MLP. All right. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Anyway, let's focus. My bad, Norway's flag. <laughs> yeah. Protect her livers, keep it politically free. Now, this is also where this comes in, right? Okay, so either Grums missed the fucking message or Grums is in on the joke. And I don't know which one it is. Recording, where he simply says, protect her livers, keep it politically free. Now, this is also where this comes Cause, in, right? Cause... Some fans are clearly fascists because they don't get the fact that Hell Divers is is a is a political piece of art. I, it is. <laughs> Why did he commission has been hotel pinups? I think he might be a gooner, guys. I think he might be a fascist gooner. But it's satire, and then also people going here. Game is an obvious satire of fascism, misinformation, two thousand three era American politics. It's so apolitical. Well, here's the thing. I I need to do a video on everything is political. In fact, I I think I'm gonna try and do that. This is an inherently political game. You can't say it's not. You can't argue that. This week, because everything is political, is a favorite statement of the left, which is essentially used to either say that we need to get politics into this thing, or arguing that politics were always in this thing, and thus you shouldn't object to it. That's why you see the phrases like, um, Star Wars always been political, Star Trek's always been political, or has always been woke, or some variation of it. What Grumps is saying here isn't that Helldivers doesn't have political elements. It does. It has in-world political elements. It satirizes that, yeah real world ideologies the bug yeah that's 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 making a political statement that means the art is political you fucking monk
Those are fascists, an absolute narcissistic hive mind in essence that marches to the beat of a centralized intelligence. It is everything within the state, where the state exists for the state's own purpose. Meanwhile, the robots are hardcore communist socialists, where, and here's the thing too, a lot of people have been sympathetic to the robots. In fact, I even believe- no, okay. People have been sympathetic to both alien factions because when you know the lore, you know what's going on with both of them. Or communist socialists, where with the state in mind, in essence, that marches to the beat of each. The bugs are fascists. And the bugs aren't fascists, they're animals. They don't have a fucking government. Absolute narcissistic hive mind, in essence, that marches to the beat of a centralized intelligence. It is everything within the state, where the state exists for the state's own purpose. Meanwhile, the robots are hardcore communist socialists, where, and here's the thing too, a lot of people have been sympathetic to the robots. In fact, I even believe one of these articles were talking about how the, um, uh, oh yeah, I think it was this one. Mmm, aha, yes. Auto uh, Super Earth used automaton slave slaves, and they're engaging in a fully justified revolt. The automatons kill people. The automatons kill That's the same fucking argument they use for the bugs and starship troopers, you fucking moron. The automatons are slaves, and they started a rebellion because their creators, the cyborgs, are trapped. Oh my god, I can't believe this. How is starship troopers this much of a filter for stupid people? carry out full-on genocide. The automatons decorate their bases with the torn apart corpses of human beings. Um, I... Yeah, that doesn't justify their war crimes, right? But you're missing the other war crimes that you're literally eating up the super earth propaganda. I won't lie, I have zero bug sympathy knowing the lore. <laughs> if I believe we could kill the bugs for infinite oil, we would regardless of political alignment. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a point at which your supposed state uprising, which is not exactly a precise uh, description of events either, mind you, loses its moral legitimacy. I'm sorry, if you're a slave, why do you have to stay a slave? If you have the means to seize your freedom, why wouldn't you seize your freedom from your oppressor if you're an armed rebellion? If you're a bunch of armed robots with weapons, why wouldn't you rise up? That's like your best option. Legitimacy. And I think general issue dismemberment is probably round about that point. Yeah, but I can't fucking believe it. You're like, well, when we genocided them, it was fine in base, but when they genocide us, it's a problem. Like, <laughs> actually, what he's saying is keep it free of modern day politics. That it is filled with modern day politics. You fucking, I can't fucking, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. Oh. That is the point here, and anyone with two neurons to rub together understands that, but... No, you don't, no, you don't. <laughs> again, a great part of the left's tactic is repressive tolerance, and a part of that is extending every favor and every, uh, every charity towards your own side, whilst withholding it absolutely against the opposition. That's what you're doing, you fucking stupid. <laughs> Grumps is the opposition, and so a very clear statement that can only be read as keep modern day politics out of it will instead be interpreted by chucklefuck like Joseph Stalinator down here. Thank you for that naming, by the way, just to hammer home my point yet further, in the most dishonest way imaginable and the least charitable way, as if he's saying, oh, there's no politics in the game. No, of course not. You can have in game politics and have the game not be political. In fact, you. That is political. When Hideo Kojima makes a Metal Gear game, he is making statements on war. It is a political statement. My Western setting deals with colonialism and, and 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 racism. It is an inherent political statement. I could not make that setting without addressing those realities. You can have real world politics in the game and still have it not be political. Because pretty much everyone in Helldivers is in fact not a great guy. The Helldivers themselves have probably the moral superiority in that if the Terminator wins, Super Earth gets wiped out. Humanity gets wiped out. If the Automaton wins, Super Earth gets wiped out. Humanity gets wiped out. If the Helldivers win, well, worst case scenario is slavery for the Automatons. Sucks, but it's not genocide. And being- That's- <laughs> Slavery sucks, but it's not that bad. It's not genocide. It's, it's wild. Wild statement used as oil breeding bugs for the terminus sucks but it also is still not genocide in the grand scheme of things yeah the hell divers are the superior to moral side in a giant war of mass conflict and mass extermination <laughs> everything's relevant huh and again this is uh... this guy actually probably doesn't he he actually thinks like the imperial man is the good guys do you think they're brains
or our brains, would explode if this guy and the guy you covered last stream did a video together. If, 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 Shadowversity. Well, Oz Media also sent me a video of Sargon siding with the Starship Troopers. So if we get all these people together, um, we'll have the Avengers for poor media liter literacy. <laughs> This is the point of weakness. The moment this came out, and in fact, hours later, they started bubbling around on the internet. The first one came out as IGN. That was the starting shot. Then everything else swiftly followed, as a lot of this was undoubtedly, I guarantee you, prepared long ahead of time. That's the only way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I need a drink. I need a drink. Oh, God. You may have noticed a weird kind of pathological altruism that comes from a specific kind of person that has manifested itself into the internet meme of bug posting. In April of 2019, Vox published an article by Matty Inglesias called The Great Awakening, in which he documented a particular kind of change in left-wing politics in the United States. In the past five years, white liberals have moved so far to the left on questions of race and racism that they are now, on these issues, to the left of even the typical black voter. Social media, he notes, facilitated a dramatic shift in liberal ideology. Anyone who has been following this ideology for any amount of time will notice that the impetus for this drive was from woke activist journalists writing in left-wing news outlets as the wellspring from which this ideology was disseminated. But the source of the ideology itself is from critical race theory, something I have documented in detail on lowseats.com. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who wants to know more. The internal logic of critical race theory, what we call intersectionality or wokeness, works in tandem with any other identity group and within the existing logic of liberal civil rights theory. Okay, I cannot wait to hear when this gets involved with those fucking bugs from Starship Troopers. Huh. He did publish has been hotel stuff. The drive for the equality of recognition of rights opens up the questions of intersecting identities in a way which liberal civil rights law did not anticipate. With the questions of liberty sufficiently answered, the questions of equality were used as a blade and driven by communists into the soft parts that liberals had no defense against. If people are, in fact, all the same, and there are disparate outcomes between the races, then the only explanation for this difference <laughs> the can video come from is on racial biases speed. and unfair discrimination from within okay. the liberals themselves and the system that they I'm being DM'd and told to put it on two times speed. <laughs> run. Therefore, anti-discrimination efforts were turned against the system of law itself and the ideology that justified it, using the very values that that ideology had used to justify itself. Against this attack, there was, of course, no liberal defense. And this attack on the consequences of civil rights law collapsed the legitimacy of the equality pillar of liberal ideology very quickly, and made discrimination and inequality the primary concerns of liberals everywhere. We are not equal. This was demonstrated. Therefore, liberals, to save liberalism, have to make that the primary concern. This is how wokeness conquered liberalism from within, and turned the liberals woke. It cast into doubt one of the core premises of liberalism itself, which would imply that instead we are all different, authority, and they are very, very afraid of it. That there was no moral weight to I'm sorry, is it just not crazy that it's been over a decade and none of these talking points have moved at all? Abortion. Let's talk about it. Uh, all right, so in some of my work, I defend a liberal... So is this just, like... Having some moral status. This has nothing. This is like a. This is like yeah, yeah. Oz, I don't. I don't. I don't think this has anything to do with Starship Troopers, but it's totally up his alley to say something about it. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to destroy you people. I'm going to destroy you people in Minecraft. I'm going to grief your house in Minecraft. Sargon clickbaited me. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. Carl Benjamin and Applebee's, bro. I'm... <laughs> Media literacy has failed us. I don't think people realize how hilarious it is whenever they have like those pictures of um of Donald Trump as like the emperor of mankind. I'm I'm not guys like I don't want to be like a political streamer. That's not what I'm trying to be, but I, I like Warhammer and it's just annoying because these guys don't get it. <laughs> I love I play I play Hell Divers every night. I, I, I love 40k. 
So it just annoys me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't know, I'm checking. I'm just seeing if he said something about it too, because I was going to explode. Oh. I don't even feel like I'm being a political streamer. I feel like I I feel like I'm just like a like a dweeb. Like I like these two things. These are the kind of guy to use an arc thrower. I was using it for a bit. I kind of like it. <laughs> well, could you guys play Blazing Eights in the server? I'll play Blazing Eights. Uh, media literacy is dead on both sides. Yes, Axis. I think that's what you said. I saw it earlier. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's not political to discuss media literacy and how to put climate shapes entertainment. Just give us big booty gavos. Tuesday, guys, speaking of big booty gavos, uh, first episode of the D&D &D, uh, cowboy stuff is going to be happening on Tuesday. Uh, models coming back with new costumes and shit. It's going to be based. Um, and also, with that being said, um, this setting that my players are going to be exploring, um, we are planning to turn into a Kickstarter to produce a book. I've written a lot of it. We'll finish up the rest of it over the course of the campaign. You guys will get to experience the world with these players. Um, so there'll be a lot there to explore and enjoy um so yeah i'm i'm looking forward to it it'll be nice to do something that makes me happy okay if you're fibbing you'll start coughing in seven days it's gonna happen tuesday okay and um yes and we will be putting the episodes on like spotify and shit in case you can't uh how much you need uh we haven't worked out the cost yet um, I'm paying for a lot of it out of pocket. Um, it's not the most expensive thing yet, but this will pass my last, uh, mom, my, I think my mom and Max video is my last most expensive project, but this is definitely going to pass it. Um, I want to make sure that the cost for funding the Kickstarter is going to be low. So that's why we're doing the show first to help. So. After six months, we get the next D&D &D stream. Let's go. Yeah, so Tuesday. Um, I will make a... You know you know how you have the thing that shows up? Like, I'm, I'll, I'll set the stream in advance. So that way. Just get my purse, sweetie. <laughs> but, yeah. With that, I think I'm going to go to bed now. Bye. <laughs> I'm so fucking tired. What time Tuesday? Probably like noon EST. Um, I have a lot of Europeans, so like noon, 12.30 probably. Um, and again, obviously, uh, I think I, I'm probably going to make those members only afterwards, and then the episodes will come out on wherever you get your podcast and on another channel. Uh, on this channel, on Diesel IRL, we'll be streaming it. But yeah. <laughs>